and we're live hi everybody happy mother's day one day late to all the mothers i have with me today first of all i'm hip flipping mama kelly or just mama oh i forgot to mute myself my voice is very annoying <laughs> But I have NASCAR Man 3345. It is 3345, right? Yep. Don't ask me why I want to say 25. I don't know why I want to say 25. But I always want to say 3325. Don't ask me why. So, but anyway, I've got Derek, NASCAR Man 3345. You know, he's like a brother to me. Morning, and guys. How's everybody doing? We're doing a working hangout. But right now, he's showing me some cars. So, go ahead, D. Oh. I went to, uh, I took Dina out for dinner last night. and Oh, how sweet of you. Did the boys do anything for them? Uh, she, they bought her a, co a coffee mug um, and a couple other things and got her a card. And they came with us. And um, Nice. So we went to Walmart. We were trying to do um, live through Streamlabs, but it keeps, but it keeps on, but it kept on bumping me off. You know, you didn't do that for the boys. You just financed it. The boys took her out. Yeah, true. <laughs> yep. You just paid for it. Right. That's how it goes until they get out on their own. Right. So we went. We went to Walmart. We bought some stuff there that, that she wanted and stuff. And um, we went then we went to Target. And um, I went to my area, and she was looking at some stuff. And... Uh, so a couple of things I have to, I'm going to go back and see if they have her size in, and she's got a couple of things that she wanted. So, but I found, um, this is called, this is almost like, uh, where Hot Wheels has their treasure hunts. Uh, Johnny Lightning has their white lightnings and, uh, Disney does for their movie cars. Still, they do a, it's what's called a scavenger hunt. And these are, this is a very limited edition car. It says it right on the side, scavenger hunt. And uh, there's, there's possibly one per case. So this is the first one I've ever found. How many are in a case? Uh, Twelve. And can you see that you're getting that before you get it, or it's a surprise? It's a surprise. That's why it's called a scavenger hunt. Gotcha. Good morning, Destiny. Good morning, Barbie. Good morning, Sir Thrifts a lot. Hello, LSP, my brother from another mother. I'm like the little sister, even though I'm older than he is. I'm like the little sister that annoys him. It's yeah. true story. It's true story. I have the age, but Craig has the knowledge. How are you this morning, my brother, Craig? Hi, Jennifer Hayes. Hello, Bill Myers. I got to tell you guys something really good, really quick. Um... So, my special bionic contacts I used to tell you guys about, well, my eyes pop contacts right out, and then I lose them. And so, my one-year subscription lasted um, five months. So, I've got my good contact in this eye, so I can see close up, sort of. And then this eye is my old one, which I can't, I can see far, far away, but I can't see close up without reading glasses. Well, I threw all my reading glasses away. So I'm going to let Derek rely on the chat because I really have to strain to read the chat. Um, Rocky is doing very, very well, Destiny. Thank you for asking. Um, he is starting to deteriorate. There was some blood in the bed this morning. I don't know if that was from his rectal tumor or if. That was from his mouth because he's been losing teeth. The medicine that he's on rots his teeth out of his mouth. So I don't know if that's what it was from. But, yeah, I'll probably get headaches, Jen. I'm going to go make an appointment and use my prescription um, for this year because that one was for last year. So I'll be okay. I'm going to call later and make an appointment. So go Who's ahead. Okay? Someone, else, someone else just jump into the chat. Look who it is. Who? It's Mr. Pittsburgh, Mr. Anthony. Anthony, I sent you a uh I sent you a link if you want he's, to jump in. He's right there. Say hi, Anthony. Oh, I'm not I'm not on the screen. Hold on. <laughs> shut up. You boys just shut up. Quit picking on mama. 
Just just try and think. Hang on. I can't see half of what I'm doing. <laughs> just try and think that it's still Mother's Day. And I am the ultimate mother. Happy belated Mother's Day, by so the way. Ways. Hi, Anthony. Hey, Kelly. So, How are you, baby? I'm great. How are you today? I'm good. Mommy sure, sure loves you. Oh, well, I love you, too. I what, said mommy. Sorry. What did you do for Ashley yesterday, bud? Um, honestly, we just hung out with my mom. We didn't really do much of, uh, you know, anything for each other. Um, she's not really a mom yet, so we don't, you know, we don't really do a whole lot for Mother's Day. You yeah. have, you have dog children. Right. That's true. We have fur babies. So, I guess. Yeah. So now I always talk about your kids. I wonder how <laughs> kids are doing. And Derek's like, mama, he doesn't have kids. I said, he's got dogs. Yeah. And dogs nowadays, let me tell you something about marketing, okay? Thelma talks about the four Ps a lot. Product, placement, price, and promotion, right? Mm -hmm. So I learned that in marketing. Another thing I learned in marketing is marketing companies, they swarm on what parents will spend money on. And because our generation kind of went through and didn't have a whole lot, you know, because our parents couldn't afford it. You know, the XYs and the baby boomers. Um, you know, I'm like a couple years from baby boomer. And, you know, we spoil our children. So the marketing companies put the marketing and the money into the children's clothing line. Well, now the marketing companies are putting it into the animals. Yep. That's why you see so many clothes. You see, you see all of these um, wonderful products for dogs things to help take care of your pet because that's where people spend their money especially people that don't have kids yet that is their biggest target market because you spoil them rotten just like their kids you spend as much money on them as you would your kids so Anthony, those are my grandchildren those are my grand dogs absolutely because you're how old anthony 34. oh shit <laughs> you're over 30. i can't adopt you oh no <laughs> why not <laughs> Because anybody over 30, I can't adopt for a grown-ass man. <laughs> well, I can no longer treat Anthony like he's my son because he's not. He's over 30. <laughs> All right, Anthony. So All I guess right. you have to find that fountain youth then. Anthony, with this broom handle, say something. I'm going to focus on you. Hello? Hi, Anthony. Hi, Pray Anthony. Me, a grown-ass adult. <laughs> thereby no longer subject to mom's to mama's mommy talk and baby talk and mommy loves you so much i christen you 10 times over shall i revert back to old times because i thought you were a kid say mama shut the fuck up I christened you. <laughs> did you see how many times i christened you i did i feel so yeah. grown now yes yeah you should I feel grown Hi Vanessa. No, the marker is still marker is still it's not on her anymore. She took it off yesterday. What marker? The marker you were painting yourself with yesterday. Oh yeah, no, that came right off. I told this you is... she was, I told you she took a cookie. She had no clue what she was doing yesterday. No, I did not take a cookie yesterday. <laughs> I'll do it again. <laughs> Anthony, you missed that. She was using black magic marker, doing her eyebrows, her lips, her eyes. <laughs> oh. I'll do it again. Oh, I, no, no, no. I'll have to go back and watch that show. Oh, it's so crazy. Hi, Destiny. Hi, Debbie. Um, who else came in? Um, that's pretty much up. Hey, Melissa. Anthony, what is so crazy about this? Oh, there you go again. It's toxic. Honey, you think the food that you put in your mouth is not toxic? Oh, I know that for sure, but it's still, you're just nuts. Honey, there's no <laughs> different chemicals. Shredded cheese has, has wood shavings in it. And Vanessa uh -huh. says, dear God, she'll do anything for new subs. <laughs> <laughs> what? Hi, Nana. <laughs> And she's doing it for the tubes. She's doing yeah, it for the tubes. I'm not though. Well, I told her I says, well, I know, I know the um Ryan and Pam did did the 
did the did the tub. I said, what, what would happen if I put the uh, video next to my into the shower and I was taking a shower this morning? And I was losing <laughs> all my subs. <laughs> <laughs> and what did I do? Same way. I sent you a meme of, of a dog in a shower. Yeah, you did. <laughs> And then he says an inappropriate comment to me. I said, I'm in bed. And he says, don't tease me. <laughs> <laughs> Unacceptable. I was busting your balls. Unacceptable. Then, uh, then she We're says, like brother and sister. I know. Unacceptable. See? You can't even tell it's Sharpie. No, you can't. I didn't say, I didn't Sharpie the whole time. No, no, I had lipstick on. Okay. She's, Vanessa says, go and get a cookie. Listen, no, those are for Rocky. <laughs> Rocky gets a cookie. That was an accident. <laughs> That's what he says. This is normal for you. <laughs> this is normal for me. Exactly. Thank you, Destiny. Destiny. <laughs> this is normal for me. This is the kind of things that I do. I told I you when I was a kid, I wasn't allowed to wear makeup, so I would color myself with my markers. So all that is is reverting back to when I was a kid. Hi, Nana's Treasures. Hey, Jameson's Closet. Good morning. Hi, Nana. Now, you want to laugh? Here's a funny story. Speaking about markers, my mom and my aunt were are four, five years apart from each other. So my, my grandmother and grandfather used to go bowling on a Monday night. So they thought they would play Cowboys and Indians one night. And the old permanent markers from the 60s, those were literally permanent marker. They said, oh, well, me and me and Joe will be um, Cowboys and Joanne, you'll be, you be an Indian. We'll take permanent marker and paint you up like a like a, like an Indian. You, uh, to you, D? No, to my aunt, my aunt, my aunt Joanne. So. Okay. Uh, so it was like half an hour before my grandmother and grandfather came home, and they're using they're using Brillo pads to try to get the thing off the, the off her face. <laughs> you know what? I used to use Brillo pads on my elbows. You see how my elbows are dark? Yep. yep. And I used to SOS pad my elbows and my knees even <laughs> as a kid because my dad would say, "Go and wash your elbows. They they look like they're dirty and they're not." So I would SOS. So I have scars all over my elbows and all over my knees. Well, I have scars I everywhere. All our and I still to this that. day will do that. Yeah. But it's so funny. We always bust our shops all the time. We're like, hey, look at it. We got multiple color, color, colored markers. Hey, Auntie, let's go and do this again. <laughs> the the next pairing was a semi pro bowler. Yeah. That's awesome. You know, those yeah. bowlers, they don't take no shit. Yeah. Did you ever get a 300 yeah. game? 300? What? Oh, that did you hit 300 a Anthony? No, we're talking Vanessa. Would, would. Oh, oh, yeah, that's, what was, that's what I was asking. That's like the yeah. highest you can get in bowling is 300. Yes, oh, she I did. thought you meant subs. Oh, no, no, she I, I still have 300. That's all strikes uh, the whole game. Yeah, she knows what it is. Now, I, used to, you, I used to bowl for years. I had yeah. a 165 average. That's awesome. I know, I'd be right? Lucky to get a 65. Huh? I'd be lucky to get a 65. I suck at bowling. Do you know what pound ball? Guess what pound ball I used? What What do you think? What pound ball I used? 12. Anthony? I have no idea. Vanessa, what pound ball do you think I used? She says 18. I didn't know there was an 18. I used a 16 pound ball. Yeah, the 18s are the pro balls. Mm. Got ya. You just know everything about everything, don't you, Dave? Well, my, my sister in law is was uh is in the uh, bowling hall of fame in Connecticut. So really? Yeah. 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 I think the highest game I ever bowled was a two forty something or two fifty something. I bowled. I bowled a two hundred five. I was happy about that. <laughs> well, Derek, you would just be happy to get down to the actual spot where you throw the ball the way you're. Uh, doing it. 
Well, but back in the day, I was pretty. I was. I had fun. See, I can't bowl anymore because I'll get the ball. I don't know how to bowl easy. I just know how to bowl the old way. Right. Where you you're whipping the ball back, you, you and then you're, you're whipping it down, and then your right leg goes way behind your left leg, <laughs> and you're doing ballet before you know it. But that's, that's how you're... I bowl, and I don't know any other way to bowl now. So yeah. when I bring the ball back, I lose yeah. the ball half the time. <laughs> but that's who's. Is your is your brother Brian Heron? Because I know there's a Brian Heron in, on the on the circuit. There was a Brian Heron on the circuit. Seamus Seamus since closet said her husband bowled a three hundred and has a ring. Yeah, most of the places if you do bowl a three hundred, you do get a ring. Did you get a ring, Vanessa? Oh, Heron oh, is a very name. Okay. A lot. Yeah, that's that's just fifty law says he bowled a they bowled a one a two ninety one time spear in the first frame. <laughs> so Vanessa, your husband is not a pro bowler? No, her brother her brother is. Oh, so maybe it's her last name. Oh, she did she she it has to be in a league, but no, she oh, did it, it off, off time. It was, it, was a, it was a practice. It was a practice for, um game. So was yeah, mine. Sucks. My two two fifty something or sixty something. That was an off game too. Dude, that sweets. Uh, Destiny. You got a boat. You bought a boat, Destiny. For, for, for forty bucks. <laughs> for forty and bucks. It was in a Miller Light commercial. That is so cool. That's really cool. Yeah, the boat and trailer was like 40 bucks because they were going to get it when we were done with our live in the morning. <laughs> that is well, so good cool. for you. Destiny, are you guys going to be able to move to Vegas before open? I made her cry yesterday, so. Why? Oh, I sent her a package, and it was something that she absolutely adored and she couldn't believe it what was it because i sent um, her a big package too i'll bet you my package was bigger than your package <laughs> my package was was very special and i think she appreciated it very much should we find you're, out you're always competing with me if mama has a package that's that big then uh we'll be, i'm definitely worried <laughs> <laughs> I have had two children, so my package has stretched. <laughs> TMI, Mama. TMI. Listen, boys. Look, Anthony is not phased by that whatsoever. And he doesn't even have children. He's never seen the miracle. He's never seen his wife transform yep. into a, a cloning machine. Yeah, literally. <laughs> And he's just fine with it, so I don't know what your problem is. It's just, you know, it's just one of those things, Mama. You know. So I'm still cleaning my room. I'm getting a lot done. I think I've only got four boxes in the living room now. Um, hopefully later today I'll be able to organize the rest of this jewelry and get everything up on the pegboard. And then tomorrow I'll be going through everything to see what I want to put in my auction. But I think I'm going to sell two of my jade rings tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, but that's I bought three rings. I bought I bought three jade rings for forty dollars each. I think I'm going to sell two of them tomorrow, maybe, or I'll save them for uh, MSP. Vanessa says, Kelly, if you have a package, you ain't you ain't who you we think you are." <laughs> my package is working right now. The Shamrock uh, Destiny said she said I sent her three Back to the Future cars, three different ones. That's oh, awesome. those are cool. Yeah, I gave her the first one from the first movie, uh -huh. the the the, the uh, hover one from yeah. the second. She likes that. And movie. I gave her the one. What's that? She likes that movie. Yeah, and then the third one. Well, it's sentimental. It's sentimental because of uh, her Tuba? brother, because of Tommy's brother. Tuba. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And the third one was the train one with the uh, the wood wheels. That's awesome. 
I used See, to Derek, before you, before you, Derek, it used to be me and Tommy and Destiny all the time. We were the three musketeers. I know, I know, I know. And then I kind of branched off into my jewelry world and forgot about everybody else. And yeah, yeah. So it wasn't forgetting about people. It was just so stinking busy because people don't realize how time consuming doing jewelry auctions is mm -hmm. and get to doing them and the people that started doing them after me they're like mama how do you do this every week i don't understand how do you do this every week and it's like i told you that's why i took a break it got to be too much yeah amanda um i know mama said she's saying you look good in red amanda that is red marker on her lips not red lipstick no, there's there's a red lipstick underneath it. I know, but still, it's more it, it's highlighted with red marker. Okay. Yes, there is a topping of there is a lining of red sharpie, along with um, a light pinky red highlighter sharpie highlighter over the top. That's his crying. She says you she no love me no more. I do too love you, Destiny, very much. You should do a video yeah. of how to like Debbie, giving you look, Debbie Kendall. Look, Debbie Kendall's jealous, you guys. Look at her. Well, she she wants the green, she wants the green ring. That's why she's very upset. Yes, but I might keep the green ring. I don't know. <laughs> you should make a video about how to do a complete makeover using nothing but Sharpies. No, oh, she pretty much did yesterday. <laughs> she pretty much did that yesterday and during the slumber party. So <laughs> you teach people how to get red carpet ready using nothing but Sharpie. <laughs> Mom yeah. is already mom has yeah. got that thing. Look at this. She's already she's already thinking already. <laughs> yeah, baby, because you know, I'm good at that. Because like I said, I've been doing it my whole life. Hey, Walt. Hey, Walt. Does Walter, go go viral. Viral. Fine, Debbie, I'll send it to you. But uh, do you still want the ring I bought from? I bought from uh, Vicky Saturday night. If you pay what I pay, I'll send you the box too. Destiny said that would be an awesome video. I'm writing it down. Amanda Paris says, Joe Jade rings, rings are mine to buy. Please, please. All right, Debbie, I'll give you first crack. You're so jealous. Destiny, don't be jealous. I still love you. And besides, Destiny, why are you worried about if I love you? You never had me in your life, Chad's anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's always Derek and Pat, Derek and Pat, Derek and Pat. Never <laughs> man anymore. <laughs> all right, all right, Destiny. Hope to see you uh, tonight at at during in the auction. So remember, everybody, tonight, seven o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Hello, Aaron. My auction. Whoop whoop. <laughs> Oh, honey, Erin, I'm so sorry, baby. You need to subscribe to my channel. Make sure you sub because the big pickle jar um, is going to be an MSP Mothership Products auction on June 29th. I'm saving that pickle jar, uh, jewelry jar for then, and that will be a gallon and a half. I want to say it's a gallon and a half. It might be two gallons of jewelry. So that's going to be June 29th, baby. Makeup tutorial with nothing but Sharpie. <laughs> Bye, Pixie Chick. Thank you very much for coming in. Thank you, Barbie. I love you, baby. Hey, Barbie, what state do you live in again? Alice, did you get your package? I know she just came in. I was wondering. Uh, everybody's getting a package. I just want to make sure you got yours. Alice is single. She didn't get package. <laughs> From the auction, Mama. She got a package, all right. <laughs> a 
I'm sorry, Erin. You know what? I'll tell you what. I'll put a little jewelry jar together for Wednesday's auction, okay? And when I say little, it'll be a good one. And there'll be silver in there, and there might be gold in there. What, what is Amanda saying? I did not say I wanted your crack. Uh. Debbie Kendall, quit yelling at me or I'll unrend you. Aaron Bass said he worked with a girl who used to use highlighters as chapstick. <laughs> yeah, I see. Boy. Look, there's so much chemicals. And, and baby fetus and mm -hmm. everything in cosmetics that it's not a big deal. Like I put face powder on again this morning. I tried a different color, a different color lipstick to try and get rid of the, my bags and look. All it did was accentuate them. I slept hard last night. So here it is. Yeah. These are things I need to buy today. <laughs> Q-tips, milk. What does that say? Contact. Oh, I need to order contacts and makeup tutorial using nothing but Sharpies. <laughs> nice. Amanda, Amanda and Deb, please calm down, you two. The rings, Mama will handle the rings herself. Please calm down. Yep, calm down, everybody. Calm down. Yeah. It's not a giveaway. What are you talking about? It's an auction on the 29th on M MSP. Yeah, it's an auction on the 29th on Mothership Products. Debbie, calm your ass down, woman. Um, mine's going to be July 27th. That's my is date. It? Oh, yours is July 27th on MSP? Yep. Landshark Picker is calm. Debbie is my stalker. This is why I call her my stalker. I yep. love her very much. We are very, very good friends. I love her very much. We're dear, dear friends. But she gets, she gets crazy. Hey, Rebecca. I hope you're ready for tonight. Amanda, Debbie's really at the heart. She's just kidding, honey. Don't get mad. Because I love morning. you, Amanda, and I don't want you going anywhere. Good morning, Lisa. Amanda, put something in chat so I know you're still here. Now Debbie wants the jars. Hi, yeah. Rebecca Cruder. She's ready for tonight. Woo, woo. Did you see her preview? She's got some kick-ass puzzles. There's one puzzle I, I want to bid on. There you go. I'm going to have to go watch. I haven't seen hers yet. Yeah. You saw my yeah, answer, that's right? That's right. Yeah. I bid. Nobody was bidding on this last week, and I bid on it. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah. Yep. I got this for $5 and $4 shipping. So I paid 9 bucks for this. I'm going to clean it up a little bit, and then I'm going to be auctioning it off. Deb's crying. She doesn't want. She. She. She's. So I'm okay now. If she can't have. She can't have your back. She, if you take yep. a ring. So Debbie, you need to calm your ass down. <laughs> Amanda, you need to come back, honey, and put something in here that you are still in my chat. Because if I find out Debbie scared you away, I'm gonna be all pissed off. Oh, I didn't test it, baby, but I'll test it right now. Let me get my little uh, jewelry testing kit that I just <laughs> made today. I just put this together today. And inside, what do we have in my jewelry testing kit? Let's see. We have my Presidium 2 gem tester. We have a loop. And we have my acid testing kit. Hey, Joanna. Hey, Raven at our treasure chest. Hi, Raven. Did you get my message about that last, the mushroom video? Hi, Joanna. Yes, I'm she is. On my stuff. I'm waiting to get my stuff, Joanna. Amanda says she is calm as well. Oh, Amanda's still here. Okay. Yeah. Amanda, Debbie's full of shit. Just, just ignore everything she says. <laughs> <laughs> Joanna, hopefully you can make it into our into our uh, auction tonight at seven o'clock Eastern Standard Time. It's me and Rebecca again, 
And then we already are lined up. Um, we're, we're lined up into uh, June already, and I know Mr. Anthony wants to be involved too. Yep. So we're going to put you, in, put you in, the li- in the line too. So we're getting good. This is going to be <laughs> So. Where's my list? <laughs> I literally have my list. <laughs> and I have to do the video. What's that? I said, are you giving us a preview? Anthony. Yes, ma'am. Are you watching? Don't say Yeah, ma'am. of course I'm watching. You say ma'am, then, I, then I'm going <laughs> to mother you. Do you watch Game of Thrones? You know what? I, I don't have HBO, so I really I really. My son don't. has HBO, and we watch it on the app. HBO now, we have a sign-on. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. All right, Anthony, you're going to be on June 10th. June 10th. Okay, let me yep. write that down. Who's on June 10th? Uh, Anthony's going to be on, on the... Uh, on your auction? auction? Yep. It you're, is you're, not scheduled for, you're, you're scheduled for May 27th, Mama. I'm coming on yours? Yes. But I thought I was the entertainment and auctioneer. Yes, but you are also have you have a spot that you're going to be selling also. Well, I was not going to ask to be on yours because I have my own auction, but yeah. they don't buy things that aren't jewelry. Okay, so May 27th, I'm on yours. Yep. Now, you need to let me do more auction, Derek, and you need to keep your mouth closed if you want me to help you tonight, and you need to keep your mouth closed more and let me talk. Oh, really? Because what do I do? I don't do anything. I just sit there, and you do everything. So I'm not even needed. I think it'd be really cool if you did like the auctioneer voice. Yeah, oh, I got 10, 10. Who's going 15, 15, 15, 10, 15, 15, 10, 15, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10
Um, I switch to calculated shipping on things, items over a pound. Mm -hmm. And it will say, so-and-so chose, because I always offer a couple things, yeah. chose priority mail and paid eight forty nine dollars or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then I go to send it to them, and it's going to cost me 12 or 13 So God. I'm losing money. It's happened mm -hmm. three times now where yeah. I've had to lose money. I need to call eBay about that and get that back because... Yeah. What I, you know, it's charging them the incorrect amount and it's charging me more right. with the discount. I'm having to pay more. Mm -hmm. Amanda, you just need to go to mothership products uh, in the search and type that in. And then on Saturday nights at eight o'clock Eastern Standard Time, he, they come on. But yep. you, if, if you, you want, want to sell on MSP, mm -hmm. all you have to do is email Dwayne. Yeah. Tell her what? Oh, everyone who knows Debbie knows I'm nuts. Ask Kelly. Yeah, she yeah. is nuts. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, you go there, Amanda. You email Dwayne, and I don't have his email because I have his phone number. Yeah, so, same here. <laughs> yeah, same here. <laughs> um, Register. Yeah, and email your name, address, phone number, your YouTube name, your real name, yeah. and um, then you can bid at the MSP auctions. And then if you if he sees that you are someone who does auctions, who is a reseller, um, then you will be able to go on there and auction items off. Most likely people that he's not familiar with, he'll pair you up with another person. Right. So you'll go on there with another person and um, you'll auction off an item and then they'll auction off an item and you'll auction off an item and then they'll auction off an item he asked me do you want to go just by yourself or with somebody i said oh no just by myself right. because i already do auctions and so it's to go on his auction it's a break for me because he's gonna be you know doing the talking and the touting and watching the chat mm -hmm. and, and all of that stuff all i'm gonna do is stand there and answer questions he's gonna tell me the questions right. so it's gonna be a treat for me and I'll be able to bring a lot more than than 10 items. So usually if you share with somebody, you bring 10 items. Mm -hmm. If you go by yourself, you bring 10 or 15. But I'm going to bring like 20 items because mm -hmm. we're going to be going boom, 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 boom. I'm kind of like going on Grumpy Barb. Um, I like to move fast. Right. Yes, Debbie, that's, 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 knows you're full of shit, okay? Yeah. But yeah, so... Um, before I have to leave, I have to leave in a little bit. I have to do a couple of things. So this weekend it's me and Rebecca. This to next Monday will be Rebecca and Todd the Flippin' Hustler. That's gonna be a good one. May that's on May twentieth, May twenty seventh. It will be Rebecca and Hip Flippin' Mama Miss Kelly. I guess so. I didn't know anything about it, but okay. I did. I told you. June third will be Rebecca. Shamrock Pixie and the Bargain Effect will be on. And on June 10th, it'll be Rebecca and Pittsburgh. Hang on, yeah. hang on. What's between 527 and 610? 6'3? Uh, six, June 3rd. Yeah. Yep. Rebecca and Shamrock Pixie. So it's always Rebecca then, right? What is that? It's always you and Rebecca. Yes. Yes. Yep. And Anthony. Yep. So that's what we have. How are you? I call you Anthony. Oh, I don't mind. Okay. <laughs> as long as you don't call me late for dinner, I'm good. Right. Hey, so that's for sure. All three of us ain't ain't gonna be starving <laughs> anytime soon. That's for I sure. I just want to show a couple of things before I gotta go. Uh, we took my wife out to dinner last night, and we went to Target, and I got two limited edition. One is called a scavenger hunt, oh, which is like yeah. a treasure hunt. And this is, uh, his name is Nick Stickers. Nice. It's a scavenger hunt. And they're limited edition only to uh, one per case, if that. So I get that. Nice. That, this is cool. The first one I ever got. <laughs> and then the um, Monster Jam, the company called Spin Master, who bought um, all the... Um, all the monster trucks that Hot Wheels used to do for Monster Jam does a chase piece too. 
And this is El Toro Loco in his practice body. Okay, D. Yeah. Those are awesome. I love it. However, and I do. I've already seen them. Yeah. I want you to tell everybody what you're going to go do. You're going to go teach a class, what it's about, who mm -hmm. it benefits, and how freaking awesome it is. Well, um, the Presto, if everybody remembers Presto, yep. the company from the 80s that used to make the fire leaders, yep. has, made a, has made a new pressure cooker. Um, they have a version now that is able to be spoke. It speaks to people who are visually impaired or are blind. So the company Insight that I do my ceramics with, is we set, we set up a class for today that we're going to teach everybody how to use a pressure this pressure cooker. And what I was told is they're raffling off three of them today for the people that are going to be there. That is awesome. So. And how wonderful, Derek. How did they... How did they get in touch with you to teach this class? And, and did they send you a, a, a promo so that you could try it out? Well, we, what we did was I'm with them in ceramics class and everything. I take a lot of classes with them that they run. They have one on stress. They had one on um, Presto dementia. Does What's that? Presto runs these classes? No, no, no. This is, uh, this is um, insight. You're your ceramics and stuff. But how did Presto... Did they contact you or did they you contact contacted them? Insight? They contacted Insight. Okay. It's a, because it's you're a, a former chef. They yes. thought. Yep. Have okay. me come over and, and learn it and, and then we'll teach teach everybody. We're gonna literally what we're making is what we're having for lunch today. So <laughs> nice. That's awesome, Derek. I yeah. just think that that is so excellent. And I really, really think that you should see if you can't stay mm -hmm. in touch with presto in regards to that because right. you know when they get new products for that type of thing yeah. they can right. send them directly to you right yeah especially if you have a youtube channel right because you know what i'm saying i've well, got right. i have friends in this community that are getting hit up with i mean yeah they've got they've got a lot more viewers obviously um but they're getting hit up with, with um people asking them to you know do a do a um a video about this cbd oil and they don't even take cbd oil but they've got ten thousand you know subscribers and I'm like, what? What's going on? You know, I I take the CBD oil. Let me do it. But they're not going to contact somebody with 600 subscribers. They want somebody with 10,000. So it happens. Especially if you're touting something a lot. Well, that's why that's what I'm hoping to do now when I'm there. I'm going to I'm bringing my camera, but um I'm going to see because there are a lot of people that don't want to be seen, and especially this group, they're a little more um, sensitive about this. So the, the, the ceramics class, the, um, the instructor, she, Ellen, she was amazing, but this is literally at the facility, so I'm going to see what we can do. But, yeah, you might uh, – some people might not want to be filmed. Right, right, and that's what I have to worry about, so – I'm bringing it anyway, and if I can get some of it, great. If send not, the video. Send the video to Presto. Yeah, that's what we're, that's what we're doing. That's what we're gonna do. So and maybe they'll send you one because mm -hmm. the the one that they have is Insight, right? It belongs to Insight. Yes. So okay, so maybe they'll send you one, and you can do a review on your on your YouTube. Yeah. And then that's another way for you to get a bunch of viewers, dude. Because right. even though people that are 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 sight impaired can still there are still things that that you can get to help you watch tv either to put over the computer screen and, and view up close mm -hmm. or you know glasses that they wear right. the technology is just awesome nowadays right so well guys i gotta get going because uh, my bus will be here in a little bit to pick me up I Bye, thank honey. You for me in. Luck, and Anthony, we'll talk we'll talk later 
Um, I'm probably going to be doing a live at two o'clock when I get home. Uh, I'll let you know what happened there. If you want to pop on, Anthony, I'll go send you the link. Same thing with your mama. Okay, baby. Um, and then we we'll get really ready for tonight's auction. I'm really anxious to see what happens because right. I love right. my pressure cooker. Right. Makes life so much easier. And for the the vision impaired to have that same, mm -hmm. you know, ability would be so helpful for them. Well, so, yeah, I, I would absolutely love to hear what happens. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I think what I'll do is maybe this week, too. I have a lot of products that I have been given by companies for being visually impaired. So I can put, bring them on, on and show everybody them also. Yeah, please. All right. You know, some of us who who are blind without our contacts, yeah. um, I'm trying to get this thing off of my, my computer screen. <laughs> it's dead. Um, yeah, it's not coming off because it's a hole in the screen. Oh, I um, because I mean, there might be something that that I can use when I'm, I don't have mm -hmm. my contacts in. Like right now, I don't have my good contact in because, you know, I'm out of them. Mm -hmm. so. so, all right, guys. Contacts, I am blind. Yep, already. All right, I'll talk to you guys later. All right, Bye, man. Good luck. I love you, baby. Bye, son. Antney, Antney, Antney. See, I wiped off my lipstick. It was starting to burn. I bet. Yeah. Can't be too good for you. Well, it's it's because when you put it on, it's rough. Mm. You know what I mean? It's a rough, and my lips are chapped. So gotcha. I'm just irritating them more when I do that. So, you know, self, self pain. I do it to myself all the time. Yeah. Hopefully it pays off. I can see you going viral with that. Oh, yeah. you talking about for me? <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Are you kidding me? He's he's going to have – I don't think he even thought about it before I said anything. Mm -hmm. I don't think he had even thought about it, but, you know, I'm a marketing major, so. Yeah. My uh, degree is in graphic design and marketing, too, so. I you know what? Thanks. You're so good at graphic design. Maybe somehow there's something I can do to help you somewhere. Mm -hmm. And you can help me with graphic design. I've got some things I want to make a logo. In fact, I've got it done. I just don't know how to get it onto the onto my website, get it the right mm -hmm. size, you know, fit it onto a business card. Maybe you can help me with that. Yeah, I'd be willing to help. Uh, the only issue I have is currently i don't have any software for it so i have to wait till i go to my mother's house she has uh all the software on her computer but I yeah gotcha. well um, i'm in no hurry i've been i've been waiting all this time and i want to do merch by amazon have you done merch by amazon no okay well i have to apply for it and i have to know how to do all those fancy programs and stuff and i don't know anything about it so maybe if you teach me or answer my questions at least um that will help me because i have a notebook yeah. of, of probably a thousand t-shirt ideas because over the last two years i've been writing them down writing them down and writing them down mm -hmm. and um because i thought about doing t-shirts back when you just pressed you did yeah. them on the cricket and then you put them on the shirt and then you pressed it yeah i thought about doing t-shirts and stuff for for ball way back 10 years ago Nice. So I used you know, to do screen printed t-shirts uh, whenever I used to wrestle. I used to be the guy that would design and um, basically give each wrestler their own t-shirt. I was real big into that because I made more money uh, selling merchandise I mean, than I did actually wrestling. So I was yes, always made, hustling, trying to make more money. So I would volunteer like, hey, who needs stuff made? You know what I mean? And then I would sell them their shirts and then they would just like upsell them at the shows. Yeah, and that's the way to do it, Anthony. You are very, very smart. See, I have my coffee pot in my office now. Mm -hmm. um, and the Keurig's in the kitchen because I've been drinking too much coffee now. I don't go by the Keurig. Yeah, I don't blame you. Um, I know yeah, I'm going to a couple bottles of water. I have a mini fridge down here in the basement. <laughs> do you? Do you have a yeah. bathroom down there? No, I have a stationary tub, so if it gets hairy, I can at least go over there. <laughs> Can you use the tub? It drains. 
Oh yeah, it drains. Yeah, because whenever I uh, do laundry, like my washing machine's like literally right behind my setup here, so it, it's actually pretty convenient. Like I do all the laundry like when Ash is work, just whenever I'm down here working. Does um see that's how I do mine too, but I I don't work down in the basement anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, and I've actually raped all the lights from down there and put them up here. And my husband came yeah. in here one night to kiss me good night for for when he was going to bed. Mm -hmm. Actually, if I wanted to come to bed with him, but he's like, it's so bright in here. He's like, <laughs> wow, it's like a circus or something. Yeah. And I I like it to be bright unless mm -hmm. I have a migraine. I like it to be bright because when you know I can see better because my sight is so bad. You know, even with the contacts, it's it's not the best. And uh, where'd my tackle box go? Oh, even with my contacts, my sight is not the best. So I'm going to be one of those people that's, that's blind before you know it. And my kids ended up with this rare disease called conacosia or something like that. Where you can go blind if you don't get it taken care of. And your, I guess your eye pupils are or your corneas are mm -hmm. honed or something and i wonder if they got it for me but the eye doctors have never mm -hmm. said anything about it and i almost want to go to an ophthalmologist and see if i have it too because my vision's always been so bad yeah um because i feel so bad that my kids have it and i don't have it or my husband my husband cannot wear his contacts and get along just fine. I don't wear my contacts and I bump into things. Yeah, I'd be blind without my glasses. I've got two pairs of glasses right here. And they're both the same exact frame, the same exact prescription. But this is what I look like in, con in my glasses. But since I've been wearing bionic contacts, that's, the, that's what I call them, is mm -hmm. bionic contacts. I don't... Uh, those prescriptions don't seem to work very well. So I don't know. I've got to make an appointment today, go back in and maybe still get those contacts, but get dailies because I went through a year's contacts because they're every one month you switch them out every month, but then that falls out of my eye and then, okay, I'm missing a contact, you know? So I went through a whole year's worth of contacts in six months. So I think I might get the dailies. They're going to be more expensive, but actually they won't be because if I lose one, I'm not losing yeah, anything. For sure. That's probably so, the way to go. Yeah. Cherry Berry. Hi, Cherry Berry. I love you. Hello, Alice. I love you. Oh, Alice gave Dwayne's email. Walter Smead. What up, Walter Smead? My sister from another planet or continent or country. So how did you do this weekend on uh, sales, Mama? I, oh, I, I didn't have any eBay sales this weekend. I just had my jewelry sales from mm -hmm. Wednesday. I had some, some low ball offers that I countered with and they didn't, they didn't come back, but I haven't been listing either. So, and again, it's, I did that jewelry auction and again, I'm not listing for eBay. I mean, I've got, I've got, okay, just to kind of show you, this is just necklaces from that last jewelry jar. And I have another one of those jewelry jars coming, but this is just jewelry that needs to be processed. And when I mean processed, I have to decide where I want to file it on my pegboard if I'm going to sell it. And this is for one, two, three, four. Okay. And so there's probably a couple hundred pieces of jewelry on here. Mm -hmm. And what is what am I going to put in the auction? What am I not going to put in the auction? And what am I going to um, list? What am I going to keep? You know, what's going to be, well, none of this is craft. This is all sellable jewelry. You know, what yeah. have I bought that I don't like um, for me? And then I'm going to sell it. But I think my most prized piece that I got out of that jar is this piece right here. And it doesn't go with what I have on. But I am going to be listing this piece for... That's cool. Thank you. $49.99. Whoops. 
So, and I think I'm going to list it on Poshmark, but it's such a gorgeous piece. I mean, you're not going to wear it with this shirt, of course, but this piece is so gorgeous. I mean, that's the top. That's the middle. There's no missing stones. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's gorgeous. And so if I sell this for $50 or 40 best offer, you know, which somebody will pay that for this. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, because it's it's gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. I've been told by three different bigger jewelry people I need to ask more for it. But I'm not going to because I don't go for the I don't go for the big sale. I go for the fast dime, or I mean, I go for the fast nickel, not the slow. Yeah, dime. that's exactly how I do things too. Because I've got so much money wrapped up in this stuff, I mm -hmm. need to pay the credit card off I maxed out to buy it all. Yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, and then another piece I'm very fond of, and I was considering wearing myself, but I don't have any really anything with red or that is red i've got one skirt that's got some red flowers but that i could wear this with but i don't really wear those skirts only like around the house the little row max skirts i wear them up here mm -hmm. so that the band the tight band can work as a bra for me because um and then i'll put a shirt over the top because um i have a bra on today because my pain is not so bad but yeah. um Lately, the last several days, I've been trying to wear like a bralette. This is the good thing about my channel, Anthony. You just get it all. I don't filter anything. I've been wearing, trying to wear a bralette because my shoulders have been so painful. But then the damn thing slips to my waist and my boobs are hanging out. And people people are like, oh, mom doesn't have bra on today. Woo! <laughs> they, don't, they don't drop to my waist or anything because I had a breast reduction 26 years ago. 25 years ago, I had a breast reduction and I had eight pounds taken off. So I had four off this side and four off this side. And mm -hmm. usually when they do a breast reduction, they take maybe a pound, a pound and a half total. Yeah. Off. So I had four off this side, four off this side. That's how big I was. That's wow. why when I had that tumor removed right here, that was mm -hmm. more than a pound and bigger than a baseball. Wow. They have to, yeah. They didn't have to do reconstructive surgery on me or anything. It was like this big. I'm not kidding you. It was the size of a softball. Yeah. Ashley um, had one of those uh, removed beginning of the year. Your wife did? Yeah. they. I think they said it was like a teratoma. Yeah. Like, it's not cancer. No, it was benign. Thank God. But yeah, they had to go through multiple surgeries because they were having trouble getting it out. Did she have to have reconstructive surgery? No. Thank God she didn't. Oh, it was not that big then. Well, I, I guess they they had to actually like open up her stomach to pull it out because it was that's where it was located, like you know. So it was down here and it was coming up into her breast cavity. No, it was actually down, like kind of wedged between her privates and her rear end. Oh, so it wasn't in her breast. No. Oh, okay. Okay. No, it was like they like she has all types of. Um, like cuts along her stomach that they had to make to get it out. And then she has one really big one on her side that they actually pulled it out from. Well, you want to get that crap out so it doesn't turn into can't see. I had, when I had my five, I had some type of disease for years. You see how this side of my neck droops more than this side. Mm -hmm. Like this is what my double chin would look like right here. Okay. But because see this, see, you can see it droops right here. Yeah. Um, because this side of my neck, for some reason, was like a robin's chest. It was puffed up to here. Where this mm. side wasn't, this side was puffed up for like a year and a half. Wow. And they, they told me I had cancer for a year and a half. And I went to infectious disease doctors. I went to cancer doctors. I went to all different kinds of doctors. Nobody could do a fine needle biopsy on it to get to where the tumor was to see if it was can was cancer or not but i had one doctor when he diagnosed me told me it was a big tumor it was cancer mm -hmm. i should get my affairs in order mm -hmm. and i was like this is before i had kids yeah. i don't even think my husband and i my husband and i weren't even married yet because we got married in 89 and then i got pregnant in 89 like mm -hmm. two months later so this is before we were even married and um oh no that was this one 
this one was when my son was in middle school. So this is about 15 years ago. But um, yeah, so then I finally went to an ear, nose, and throat guy who did a scope, and which I proceeded to choke during yeah. breathing. And he had to come and rip the scope, you know, because he had put the scope down and he left the room for a minute to get someone else to confer. And I started choking and everything. And he had to come in and rip the scope out. And so he says, you know what I'm going to do, Kelly? He says, you've been through enough. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to open you up and see what we find. So he scheduled surgery. And see this scar? Yeah. He opened me up and he took out five lymph nodes. He said, because wow. something was smothering my my esophagus and mm -hmm. I was I would actually choke and, and stop breathing. I couldn't breathe. And what it was was lymph nodes that were so swollen they were putting mm -hmm. pressure on my esophagus, which is why I was choking and having such a hard time breathing. And um he sent them for testing and they tested normal, so they never knew why. My lymph nodes puffed up like that. And that's mm -hmm. why when when Destiny had cats, you know, they said, Derek said Destiny has cat scratch fever from her cat, yeah. and um, which is a real thing, cat scratch fever. That's a real thing. Um, he thought maybe I had that because we have a cat. But I yeah. didn't test for that. They never found out. He says he thought maybe it was, had to do with my sarcoidosis in my lungs, but he wasn't for sure. So I never actually got a... Yeah, I've had my shares of ups and downs, Cherry Berry, that's for sure. Um, ooh, Vanessa had her thyroid removed. Mm. Wow, yes, yeah, so you know how I feel. But um, I puffed up right here on, you know, one time after the surgery. And I went back on the prednisone, it went down, and then it never puffed up again. But you can see, you know... He promised he would, he saw me in the store one day, or no, the hospital. I was in there with my mom, and he comes up to me, and he goes, wait a minute. This was like 10 years after my surgery. He goes, I don't like the pucker in that. Come in my yeah. office, and we'll fix that. And I'm like, what? So I actually have an appointment with him next month. So when I go in, I'll tell him you can do something here. And then, I don't know, I might check into getting this. You know how they can put string mm -hmm. in there or something and pull oh. it back? Yeah, because I'm I'm really tired of one side of my neck drooping more than the other. Yeah. Now that I'm on YouTube, I'm a little more caught, you know, conscious of it. Yeah. So, because that would be nice, you know. You don't have to take all of it, but. <laughs> and then if I get this shaved off. You know, my, my teeth used to be really big in the front. But, mm. see, I grind my teeth. And I ground this tooth right down. So now I want to get this tooth cut off so it's even with this one. So it'll be like, doesn't that look a lot better? <laughs> but anyway, back to jewelry. How the hell did we get caught on that? I have um, no idea. But I like this one. Rabbit too. holes. Rabbit holes, yeah. So this is a very, very nice necklace. That came out of that jar, too. So... I'm very, very lucky. I'm going to be selling this one. I think I'm going to list this one for $29.99, and then I'll run a sale of, you know, 20% off. So um, it'll be on sale for, like, $24, and I'd probably take a best offer of $20. But it's brand new. It's mm -hmm. brand new without the tags. So I... Uh, yeah, that's nice. I don't yeah, know about the jewelry. I don't really wear this type of necklace, but this is really pretty. Mm -hmm. And I would actually, this is one I would take apart and I would wear this as a pendant. I would, I would, you know, make the chain shorter in between. I yeah. would wear it as a bracelet. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And make a ring out of one of them and just wear a single ring here, a bracelet on the other one, and then one as a pendant. Because that's the kind of stuff I do. But so many people love this piece when I pulled it out of the jar. I'm going to, I'm going to sell it. But I have to go through all of this jewelry yet. And that's how we got on it because I put something up to my neck. Um, but, yeah, there's just there's so many. Like, I've got two necklaces that are the same, but one is they're different colors. So I don't know if I want to put them together. See these mm -hmm. two right here? I don't know if I want to put these together, if I want to sell them separate. So that all that stuff, to, see how they're the same? They're not in the screen. Huh? They're not on screen. Or not. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Heavy. As they come rushing. <laughs> huh? 
I said as they come rushing into the screen. Yeah, right? Now I can't find them. Of course, I can't see either because I've got my old contacts in, which are a different prescription. They're the exact same necklace, mm -hmm. and most of what was in here looks brand new, Anthony. There's no wear whatsoever, no scratches. That's good. So they're the exact same but different colors. So I'll probably, these are just acrylic. I'll probably mm -hmm. sell them together. But I really like this type of necklace, That, but I don't have the right neck for it. Yeah, and I got a lot of nice pieces. I got this piece, too. That's a statement piece. Look how pretty that is. So I've got, you know, I got that out of that jar, too. I've got a lot I got to go through. And look at this piece. This piece is very, um, almost looks Aztec, but yeah, isn't it pretty? That looks like something like... Uh... I'd say like an Egyptian queen or something would wear. Yeah, it is Egyptian looking. But the colors are also Aztec looking. But I've mm -hmm. got to do some research on it. This is definitely not a new piece. Um, but it's got hammered metal on the back. And I've got to test this for silver. So I don't think... Yeah, it does smell like it could be silver. I'm going to test it really quick. But there's so much to do with this stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, I can imagine. Looks like there's a lot of work that goes into it. Oh, there is, dude. There's so much work that goes into these. And people just don't understand. Yeah. And that's why I was saying how I got so busy with my jewelry that I didn't have time for my friends and people don't get that either they think that you sell and you just sit around and do nothing all day you sit around waiting well, for i'm talking about i'm talking about my reseller friends oh and gotcha. my, yeah gotcha. my you my youtube friends and stuff I, i'm talking about them too mm -hmm. and i was so you know like like derek and destiny and i used to like google hangouts for two three hours a day yeah and then so they probably think i just dropped them and i didn't and i still love them to death yeah I miss them terribly i miss all of those guys terribly i miss them terribly but you know we don't we're not selling the same things now mm -hmm. and so we don't have you know i don't know i get it i mean i mean look this is, this is this is how much i love them I sent them a whole box of stuff with stuff for the kids. Yeah. And I sent Destiny a 10 karat gold um, shamrock charm. Oh, that's nice. Because I love her so much. It, yeah, it's a four leaf, was a four leaf clover. And I wanted to sell it, but I, nope. I was like, I told her I was sending it to her and I'm sending it to her. Yeah, that's really cool of you. I did not take a bite of the cookie, Vanessa. Picky Chick sent me this. You know Barb, Picky Chick, who's in here? Mm -hmm. She's got a huge following. So I don't know why she likes to mess with me, but <laughs> she sent me this because I asked her. She pulled it out of a haul, and I asked her how much she wanted for it, and then I get it in the mail. That's Isn't awesome. that beautiful? That's really cool. I know. So what are you working on today? Um, I got a bunch of stuff I need to send out, and then I was just going to start listing. What all did you sell? Uh, I sold a bunch of Pokemon cards. Really? I've got a whole bunch of Pokemon cards that were my son's. They're downstairs uh -huh. in the basement, and I got the Pogs, too. Oh, nice. Yeah. I do stuff like that would sell now. It's the old oh, yeah. Pokemon. I, I do really well with Pokemon cards. I actually... Several years ago, I started just casually selling on eBay with Pokemon cards and video games. And really? uh, yeah, so that whenever I kind of went full time, I was like, well, you know what I mean? Like, I already know that I can sell based upon, you know, what I've been doing with that. And then I got a hat that needs to go out. CD. Now, what does that signify? Is that Green Bay Packers and a red no, hat? Georgia Bulldogs. Georgia Bulldogs. Okay. Yeah, I got like a Rihanna CD. Woo! Uh, yeah. PlayStation 3 game. You should put, well, then we'd get a strike. Never mind. A PlayStation oh, yeah. 3 CD? Or you mean manual. Game? What is that? The 1973 Corvette manual. Nice. What'd you get for that? Um, let me check. 
I bet you you got like 60 bucks for it. I wish. No, I didn't get that much. Somebody was saying that they sell those. Oh, it was a lady on um, being interviewed from Suzanne A. Wells's YouTube channel. I only got $20 for it. 20 bucks? Yeah. What year is it? 1973. Well, that might be why. Because look at this necklace. Speaking of Pokemon cards, I sold this whole binder of them, too. Oh, nice. What'd you get for that? I only got 20 it was a best offer, but these are all common cards. So there's, there's yeah. nothing valuable in here at all. So this I mean, is I think that's great. Yeah. I think that's really great. Look at this necklace. Oh yeah. That's cool. Isn't that different? It is. Yeah. Thank you for appeasing me with my jewelry. Oh man. No problem. Dude, this, this, oh no, this is not, Never mind. I have a real pearl, golden pearl, Necklace that I, I bought off of a, an auction, mm -hmm. and it's so gorgeous. It's too heavy. I can't wear it, so I'm going to sell that in MSP, too. Nice. See, that's if I buy something for myself and it doesn't turn out where I can wear it, mm -hmm. it's nice that I have an outlet that I can make my money back with it. Absolutely. I do that a lot, too. Yeah. You, either that or when I'm done with it, like, you know what I mean? Where it doesn't get used anymore, I'll just resell it. And then I've got these. These are two strands of real pearls. Nice. Yep, I think I'm going to sell these in MSP, too. I'm going to send them to Thelma just to get her. Maybe I'll send them to Dia. Because Dia's got a certification in pearls. Because they're so shiny, I think maybe they've got a coating on them. Um, and maybe they're not real, even though they're pretty. I don't know. I got to see. Dia's still on vacation. And then I tried to auction this off, Anthony. And I started the bid at $10, and nobody wanted it, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, fine, whatever. It snaps. It's really yeah. pretty. So then people started looking it up after I pulled it, right? Yeah. And it goes for like $60. bucks. Mm -hmm. $60, so I'm glad I didn't sell. Yeah, for sure. Welta says that uh, both her children love Pokemon, and they made her like it as well. Uh, hey, Welta. I've always liked it. I grew up on it, and I'm looking forward to actually going to see the uh, new movie, the uh, Detective Pikachu. I didn't know there was a movie coming out. Yeah, it's like live action. Um, oh, really? So yeah. they're going to have cartoons mixed in with real people? Yeah, only they try to make them look like they would like if they were real. Oh, so it's CGI stuff, not cartoons. Yeah, pretty much. Nice. Who's starring in that movie? Ryan Reynolds. He plays Pikachu. Are you kidding? Yeah, so, like here, here's one of the cards from the see? movie. This is like a promo card of Snubble. See if you can get a. So it's just his voice then. Yeah, it's just his voice as Pikachu. But they try to make the Pokemon look like they would if they were like real creatures. That's cool. Yeah, it's going to be pretty cool. I like Ryan Reynolds. I think he is a phenomenal actor. Yeah. You know, even drama. But, um, yeah, I really like him. And I like Blake Lively. I think they make a cute couple. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just took my mom to the movies yesterday for Mother's Day. And, oh, yeah? Uh, yeah, we saw that movie Breakthrough. I don't know if now, you know. who's in that? Um, it has the chick from This Is Us in it, and um, oh, yes, the, the Christian one, yeah, where like the kid falls through the ice, and that's a true story, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, so we went so, to see that, and tell, uh, me, tell me what happens, give me all the spoilers because my husband won't go see Christian movies with me. He did mm -hmm. one time, I tricked him into it, yeah, and he had a, he had a really hard time with it because he he says he doesn't necessarily he believes. He believes in Jesus. He just has a lot of questions, and he doesn't understand why there would be so much devastation in the world if, mm -hmm. you know, why Jesus would let that happen. And he's just, he gets mad about it. And I said, well, honey, you're you're mad at Jesus. You believe in him. Yeah. If you didn't believe in him, you wouldn't be mad at him. I actually got a booklet. Where the heck is it? Like, literally all about why that kind of stuff happens. I just. Uh, I would really like it. Yeah, I'll I'll send it to you if I can find where the heck I put it. Well, don't I, spend I have it down here somewhere. I'll send it to you. Don't spend too much time looking for it, my love. 
uh, I, I'll come across it as I'm pulling orders. Yeah, so, yeah. So. Whenever you happen to come across it, okay. Yeah, not a problem. So, just yeah, don't give me your address yeah. privately, and then I will make sure that I send that to you guys. Well, you could send it to my PO box, which is public. Okay. Cool. Um, or if there's an online version, I'll give you my. This is my email. It's just hit flipping mama. Oops, I'm not even in there. Hit flipping mama. Yeah, Joanna, it's a sinful world. Joanna, I know that you are pro life, and I just feel like I need to tell you I'm pro choice, and I love the fact that in this country we can choose to believe and stand up for whatever we want to believe and stand up for. And you're probably pro-choice or, or pro-life, aren't you, Anthony? Yeah, definitely. Especially being that right now me and my wife aren't able to have children. Like, knowing that, you know, if somebody doesn't want a child, like, we'd be happy to, you know, adopt a child. Now, let me ask you this. And, okay, so there's my email. Hit Philip and Mama at Yahoo. Okay. And then I'm going to put my P.O. box in here. Oh no, my screen went away. I got this keyboard and it's got all these special features that I don't know anything about. And I like all the time am like doing these weird things and I don't know what I'm doing because I don't understand the keyboard. I'm gonna have to look it up. 490. This is my public PO box and then you can just put my name there. P -O oh, I didn't put the P oh, P.O. box in there. Ah, ha, ha. Sorry. Hang on. But let me ask you this, Anthony. And mm -hmm. this is not, there's no malice involved with this question. Mm -hmm. um, I love you very much. Happy to answer any questions. Yet. Ellen Haggard, P.O. Box 55, Comstock, Michigan, 49041. Okay, what about people who've been raped and then become pregnant and have abortions? And then what about people that maybe get pregnant when they're older and there would be health problems with them carrying the baby to term or there's something wrong with the baby, you know, and the baby's deformed or something like that or has a health concern or like the like the mom might die. Mm -hmm. um, how does pro life people, you know, people that believe in that, how do they feel about situations like that? I've I've always been curious about that, mm -hmm. but I've never known anyone. Um, in my opinion, and, and this is only my opinion, I believe that every circumstance is different. You know what I mean? Like, so you can't really say that this is a standard across the board um, because, I mean, if it's going to be dangerous to both the baby and the mother, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I couldn't even put myself in those shoes because, number one, I, I'm i a man. I can't have a child. You know what I mean? But mm -hmm. I believe that every life is precious, and I believe that every um, child, even before the point of conception, God has a plan for their lives. Mm. You know what I mean? So, like, I couldn't in good faith say that, you know, you should terminate the child. But I know that even if you can't love the child, for whatever reason, there's somebody out there that will. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. it, so. And it's, I don't think, because, I mean, I know people that have been in that situation. And I know people who have had abortions because they weren't ready to be parents. And um, I have I have strong feelings about that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, I, you know, I have feelings about that. Um, but I also, I know people in my, you know, in my family and, and whatnot that have, um, have been in that position to where their lives have been in danger or, you know, because yeah, sure. the child and, and the child was severely deformed, um, you know, when they chose to have an abortion. And I, um, 
And even in those types of situations, there is so much guilt, regret, and mixed emotions and feelings of inadequacy and mm -hmm. and fear if you're going to heaven and things like that. You know, I've I've heard I've heard a lot. And well, um, speak to that for a minute. I mean, regardless if you've had an abortion or not, that that's not something that would mean that you're not going to heaven. Because, I mean, just biblically, the only way to heaven is through a relationship with Jesus. And I'm of the belief that regardless of what you've done in your life, you can still be saved by Jesus just through your faith in him and your confession of a relationship with him. Because um, that, that's why he came. He came to be that payment mm -hmm. for sin. You know, so that you when know, we stand before the Father, if we have a relationship with Jesus, he sees his righteousness, not ours. So I, you know, I, I was watching this thing on YouTube. It was shortly after we had went and watched The Passion. Yeah. And on the way back from watching The Passion, because I took my Bible with me, I was sitting in the back seat. It was mm -hmm. my husband and no, 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 no. It was my husband and I. And I pulled out my Bible and I was telling the story when I was sitting in the back seat with other people, but I flipped open my Bible, right? Because mm -hmm. I had this thing where I was I'm trying so hard to read the Bible front to back, the, the yeah. new King James version. Mm -hmm. Although there are new there are easier versions to read now, yeah. but it's the new King James that, that my great big Bible I read from, yeah. I read from. And I I flipped it open. And I immediately, what was there on the page and the paragraph I was staring at was the passion. It's where they, he was walking down with the cross, you know, carrying the cross and he falls. That's the part I started reading. Now, yeah. of all the places in the Bible. Now, I don't know the books of the Bible well enough to know where this book is. I don't know what happens in what book. I'm not knowledgeable enough. Yeah. To know, I couldn't name more than three or four um, books of the Bible anyway, let alone be able to know where in that Bible the passion is. You know, yeah. it, but I mean, you can't say that that wasn't divine intervention. Then I opened it up. But for the first time in my life, after watching the passion, for the first time in my life, I felt worthy. Yeah. It was the first time in my life that I felt worthy. And I was so grateful to Jesus for his sacrifice for me. Absolutely. First time that I felt like I deserved to be on this earth. And I was like, I mean, when did that movie come out? 20 years ago? Something like that. Yeah, it's oh, been yeah, I was 30. It was in my 30s. Um, I think it was about 15 years ago because it was when my son was playing ball around mm -hmm. the time I had my surgery. So I think it was about 15 years ago. And, but for the first time in my life, for, for me to feel like, okay, I'm here for a purpose. Yeah. I'm worthy. He died for me. So I, he loved me before even the idea of me existed. Yeah. And I felt very, very loved. And then shortly after that, I watched Jim Caviezel give a sermon, not a sermon, but he was being interviewed. And yeah. he looked at the crowd and he, for about 10 minutes, was talking about, um, because I have this thing where I don't feel like I'm worthy to go to heaven. And yeah. I don't think I'm going to go to heaven because I don't feel like I'm a good enough person to go to heaven. And I struggle with that. And so much so that I haven't touched my Bible in probably 10 years. I haven't read from my, my special Bible that I used to read from mm -hmm. because I don't know. Choices I've made in my life, things that I have done, I just feel, you know, I swear all the time I take the Lord's name in vain. I don't feel like I'm worthy, so I, I can't touch that Bible. Mm -hmm. And, but Jim Caviezel gave this speech to the crowd during this interview, and he says, all of you people that have had abortions, and for those of you who paid for them, you're not exempt from this. You have the abortion too. You need to take responsibility for that. Um, <clears throat> why do you feel like our Lord, my Lord is not forgiving enough to forgive you for that? Mm -hmm. And Absolutely. yeah, it answered a lot of questions and stuff for me. And I was like, wow, that really makes sense. Yeah. But I still struggle with my own mistakes and, and feeling of, of worthiness to go to heaven. But I don't know. I just have always, since I was a child, 
<coughs> felt like I have to be good enough to go to heaven. I have to be good enough to go to heaven. Well, luckily, and, luckily you don't. And uh, the the awesome thing is uh, Romans uh, five eight says that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So right. regardless of what you've done or anything, it has nothing to do. That's the greatest part about it. It has nothing to do with our worthiness. It has nothing to do with anything we've done. It has everything to do with what he's done. And but, you know, it, and here's, here's the ultimate question, too. And I did not mean for this live to be religious, but you know mm -hmm. what? This is what I feel like talking about. And, Absolutely. you know. Yeah, I love talking about Hi, it. Memo. <laughs> Good morning, Memo. How are you, baby? Hi, LSP. Um, I forget what I was going to say. What did you say before I said hi to the chat? Oh, I was just, I was basically just saying that while we were yet sinners, Christ chose to come and die for us. Yeah. I don't know. I still struggle with, I think it's because when I was a kid, mm -hmm. I had a vision of Jesus or what I thought was Jesus when I was in the fourth grade. Mm -hmm. And yes, my vision was bad back then, but I was laying on the couch Mm -hmm. With my hamster Sandy, because my mom and dad were mad because she was in her wheel and it was keeping everybody up. So I had to go to the living room to sleep with Sandy. Yeah. And we had this window, and it was uh, the curtains were were cream colored curtains because at this point, you know, it was the seventies. It was the late seventies. Yeah. Cream colored curtains with brown specks through them, <coughs> open like this. And it was pitch dark because it was the outside. Anybody could look in if they wanted to. But I was just looking at out the window, you know, and then all of a sudden, like, you know, when your TV goes out after broadcast is done, it's just black and white. Psst. Mm -hmm. Well, all of this, like, swirling black and white came, and I was like, what? And then it, I got up, and I was walking towards the window, and it, it formed a face, the, the typical white Jesus that you would see, even mm -hmm. though Jesus was Middle Eastern and not white, but yeah. the typical, you know, and Jesus will appear to people in the, in the way that you will recognize them as him. Do you know what I'm saying? So like, I believe like he, you know, I've heard stories where he'll present himself to people in a way that you, the person he's presenting himself to sees him and knows that that's him. So Maybe he'd present himself differently to somebody else, but my version at that time was the long hair, mm -hmm. the face, the beard, and the robe. You yeah. know, the 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 long white flowing. Okay, and I only saw him from like the shoulders up, and I got halfway through, and I mean, I was shaking, Anthony. Mm -hmm. I was shaking. I was scared to death, and then I start to walk a little closer. And because I was a daredevil even back at that age, I mm -hmm. had to be, you know, to survive. And then all of a sudden, just as he came, sparkle, 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 you know, black and white, twirly, twirly, he was gone. Mm -hmm. And I went and woke up my mom and dad and said, Mom, Dad, I just saw Jesus in the window. I just saw Jesus in the window. And I was like 10, right? Nine, 10. Yeah. And they said, Kelly, you're crazy. You're dreaming. I said, No, I'm not dreaming. I wasn't sleeping. Mm -hmm. please come and look dad please come and look and they both ne neither one of them ever believed me my mom believes me now but none of that neither they just they just said you're crazy and they did not take me seriously and i didn't sleep the rest of the night it was the first night i ever stayed up all night that mm -hmm. i can recollect and i just sat on the couch and looked out that window and waited for him to come again and nobody ever believed me in my family. Nobody ever, 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 ever believed me. And I don't know that anybody really believes me now. People I tell believe me, but but I was so scared, Anthony. And then I, I saw a documentary not too long ago, about five or six years ago, talking about how Jesus came to these kids when they needed him. He yeah. came to them and said, it's okay, you're going to be okay. Mm -hmm. But they all talked about, you know, they were adults then. They all talked about how warm of a feeling it was and how they felt mm -hmm. comforted. Now, if that was really Jesus, why was I scared? Was it the devil in disguise? But because I was approaching him, I was more powerful than him in that moment. And he just went away. Because why would I have been scared? You know what I mean? Yeah, uh I mean, honestly, what what I would say is it, it it probably had to do with your perspective. 
of Jesus at the time. Um, I, I highly doubt that it would have been the devil, although the, the Bible does say that he does masquerade as an angel of light. But um, he, he wouldn't show as Jesus. Like, if anything, he would deny Jesus. Um, but it was so real. It was so oh yeah, absolutely. real. I've had a similar encounter with the Lord once. Um, I was laid up in bed um, on crutches. Uh, I had gout really bad in my foot and I couldn't walk. And I was in ministry school at the time. And um, I was reading a book and it was talking about how this guy had like a 90 minute encounter with Jesus. And uh, I just got like so jealous, like, wow, why does this guy get to have this huge encounter with you, Lord? And I don't get to see you at all. And um, I just closed my eyes and I was like, God, I'm not going to stop praying until I see you. And at that very moment, he like appeared at the end of my bed. And like, as I went to like, like you said, get up and go to him, it was just like, he was gone. So did you, did you see him with your eyes closed or your eyes open? My eyes were closed. And then as soon as I opened my eyes to go there, he was gone. Wow. Well, he, and look what I'm holding right now. Oh, wait, you can't see it. Oh, yeah. I, I locked on you. Hold on. Look what I'm holding. Mm -hmm. Isn't that beautiful? That is. It's really beautiful. Um, Yeah, new tags I got out of that jar. I'm telling you that was a good jar. <laughs> that was a good jar. Um, Yeah, I just, and, and I've, I've had other visions, too. So mm -hmm. my daughter has had many, many visions of spirits. Mm -hmm. And my daughter has psychic ability. My mom has some psychic ability. I have some psychic ability. Mine is more premonitions than anything else. Um, I can't see the I can't see the future. I can't speak to spirits and stuff. But um, I've had a lot of premonitions where I've called people and said, "Don't do this. Don't do that. Don't go here. Don't go there." And then tragic things have happened, like when they would have been there. Mm -hmm. um, and after my uncle, my husband's uncle passed away, I was very close with him. I had a really nice connection with him. Um, out of the corner of my eye, I was on the computer. This was at several houses ago, but out of the corner of my eye, I turned and I saw someone, you know, kind of with his back to me, but turned slightly towards me, rocking in the rocking chair. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as I looked, I got maybe, you know, a second, second and a half, two seconds. He was gone. Mm -hmm. And I knew who it was. I knew it was Uncle Pete. And so I called his family, who we were kind of estranged from at the time. Well, not me, but my husband's family, okay? Because it was my, my father-in-law's brother. And um, I called them and I said, what did Uncle Pete look like when he was younger? Did he have dark hair? Was it parted to the side? Did he have glasses? Was he thin? And they're, you know, and they said, yes, Kelly, why? And I said, um, I just saw him. And they're like, what? I said, he was just here. The rocking chair just stopped rocking. He was here. And they were just like, oh, my God, oh, my God. And, you know, they're, they're Catholic. They're strict believers. And, you know, they were yelling at the rest of the family. Oh, my God, Kelly. And, and they really they really love me. The family yeah. really loves me. I really love them. There's there's problems with the rest of the family. But um, they're like, Kelly just saw dad. Kelly just saw dad. And then at his viewing, I saw photographs of him. And that was him. Wow. So, um, but you know, they used to say, they said to me in that conversation, you know, dad used to talk about you all the time, Kelly, dad loved you so much. He loved you so much. He was so happy that you became part of the family because he said that side of the family really needed somebody full of so much love. And they did, they did. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, I've had, I've had visions like that. Um, and then my uncle that passed away. I knew when he passed away because he came to me at work. I saw his face in my computer monitor. And that was the last place that I had I had talked to him a few days before. You know, I had talked to him and said, I can't come see you because Clay's got baseball. And but I'm after his baseball game, I'm gonna come see you. And well, he had slipped into a coma, and so I couldn't come see him, but I did get to talk to him. And the last thing he said to me was, Love you, sugar. That's how that's what he used to say, love you, sugar. And then his face came to me in the monitor and said, love you, sugar. 
you know, he didn't like, that's what I heard in my mind was love you sugar. And then I made a phone call to my mom and my mom was, you know, kind of upset. And she said, Larry died. And I said, I know he did. He just came to me. But again, he was an uncle that was, I was very close with and loved very much. And, but you can't tell people things like this unless you're live on YouTube with <laughs> 600 people watching. <laughs> um, you know, because people aren't going to believe you. But as a child, I wanted to know about religion so much. Mm -hmm. But my, my parents didn't go to church. They didn't talk religion. They didn't know religion. Yeah. And so I would have to wait for friends to invite me to go to church with them. And then that's how I got to learn. I went to a, so many different churches, so many um, branches of religion. Mm -hmm. I just got so confused because in some, you know, Mormon, you can't do this. You can't do that. You know, Presbyterian has their rules. Um, Baptist has their rules. I was baptized Baptist, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but I never baptized my children. And let, let me ask you this, Anthony. I never got around to baptizing my kids. Okay. Okay. Now, but when they were little, I did do the, the ceremony. Dedication. Huh? You dedicated them? I asked them to get down on their hands and knees. And if they believed in the Lord, mm -hmm. to ask the Lord to take them into his, into his heart. Mm -hmm. And they both did that, but they were children. Yeah. So does that count? Absolutely. Yeah, I don't, I don't believe that baptism is necessary for salvation. Uh, basically, what baptism is, is it's an outward declaration of your salvation. It doesn't necessarily save you. It, um, it It's just an outward uh, public display showing that you've already dedicated your life to Jesus. Well, after my, and I hope my son doesn't mind me sharing this, but mm -hmm. he doesn't watch my YouTube anyway. But after my father had died, he was dating a girl. Her name was Cassie. Beautiful mm -hmm. young woman. Very into sports. They were a cute couple. But he, I think she was more of a buddy than she was of a, a soulmate, you know. Yeah. But um, she was very religious where her parents were. Yeah. And so it's actually the reason he broke up with her is he couldn't handle all the religion. Mm -hmm. But um, he went to church with her and there was this this process they were doing where they would put their hand on the shoulder of the person in front of them. Mm -hmm. And he said, when he did this, he closed his eyes and bowed his head. My father came to him just mm -hmm. clear as day in his mind and spoke to him, you know, and, and called him Juggy because that was his nickname. Yeah. Was so happy. My son said he was so happy. And my son just started bawling. He said, he just started crying. Yeah. And, um, but my son had already been questioning the Bible mm -hmm. prior to this, prior to seeing my dad. And, um, he, one of his best friends was atheist and his family converted my son, not to atheist, but mm -hmm. they converted him to more science than the Bible, mm -hmm. you know, believing more in the science than the Bible. And my son does still believe in Jesus. Yeah. He's got questions. You know, like, how did people live to be 160 years old? Mm -hmm. And I told them, now you correct me if I'm wrong. I said, either the timelines were different back then, son, mm -hmm. or people were just given a longer life because they had more to teach than others. Maybe they they followed the Lord's, the Lord's uh, word more than others, and that's why they lived longer, so they could share that word longer. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it's because back then they didn't have, they didn't have, the cancers, the plagues, the, the, you know, the pollution and, and the chemicals that we have now so they could live longer back then. Yeah. So, the, I mean, the, I only, the only real like answer that. I'd have to that is uh, the word does say that um, in Genesis that the Lord shortened man's, man's life to approximately 120. Now that doesn't mean that there won't be somebody older than 120. It's it's approximate 120 years. Well, people did live a lot longer. Oh, they yeah, yeah. Longer you'll you'll read accounts in Genesis of people living to be like over 900 years old. Right, exactly. And mm -hmm. I do recall that because I I I remember taking notes in my in my notepad about that because I mm -hmm. I was questioning how is this possible. 
Yeah. But the Lord created the Lord created the the heavens and the earth. Okay. So I mean, by then, I mean he could he could make anything possible. But yeah. if when you when you and I'm sorry for everybody who who wasn't prepared for this type of conversation. I I am very very sorry to you guys. But this is what I feel like talking about. And um, you know, Anthony's my guy now, and that I can go to with these questions apparently. <laughs> and so I'm gonna I'm gonna ask him these questions. And so thank you for being respectful in the chat of of my wishes. But um, what was I gonna ask you? I don't remember now. Well, what were you talking about? We were talking about the Lord shortening people's lives to approximately 120 oh, years. Oh yeah, I know what I was going to ask you. What do you? What do you? How do you answer when people say, "Well, how can people find dinosaur bones that are 65 million years old if the Earth is only supposed to be 8,000 years old?" The really cool thing is, I don't know if you ever heard of a guy named Ken Ham. He um, is a uh, big Christian guy. He speaks uh, against uh, like a lot of atheists and stuff like that on YouTube. But he also uh, opened up a couple places over in Kentucky. He has like the life-size Noah's Ark, and he also has uh, the Creation Museum. And um, it's basically yeah, I've, like I've seen it on TV. Mm -hmm. And uh, the the way that it's described is um, the way that the flood game. And it killed all life on Earth except for like two of each. Um, it it would have shifted the um, continents and like you know like the underneath the well, Earth. Sure, because that would that would melt the uh, the the ice sheets. Oh, well, exactly. Like it would have like done that so much that a lot of like the dinosaur bones and the stuff they're finding would have been just severely buried down below. So a lot of a lot of their dating. Um, while it, it is accurate, it it wouldn't account for, you know, the creatures of the flood that were that were extinct at that point. So, are you saying then that that dating is wrong? I believe it is. Okay. But well, I mean, what about what about instead of God creating Earth, what if Earth has been here for tens of millions of years? What if Earth has been here for seventy million years and Earth just populate or Christ or God just populated the earth and created life on the earth. I, I believe he, he created the whole, the whole shebang. Like in, in Genesis, there's like a, uh, the very first chapter is all about the account of creation. You know, where so you think we're there was no up. earth. There was no earth until the, until God created it. Yeah. I believe he created everything. Okay. So then, wouldn't Adam and Eve have been living in the time of dinosaurs then? Yeah, absolutely. Actually, if you go, um, you can actually even go on my Instagram account. Um, there's pictures from the Creation Museum. On uh, your Instagram? Yeah, there's okay. there's pictures I took from the Creation Museum. Who's that, that under? What, what name is that under, Anthony? Pittsburgh and at. Or it's Pittsburgh underscore N underscore at. Um, but... There's pictures of the at dinosaurs. Nine or AT? Here, I'll, I'll, I'll type it in. Okay. Thank you, honey. Yeah. Thank you for answering all my questions. Hi, Joy. Thanks for joining us. Anamora. All right. I just shared it. Um, there is um, pictures at the Creation Museum of dinosaurs actually being in the Garden of Eden. Really? Mm-hmm. That is interesting. See, I'm 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 all into this because see, nobody ever answered my questions as a child, and then I had visions, and so, you know, I almost I even went so drama mama that um, I was so confused one time that I held a kitten, and of, of course I had a really bad childhood. I had good parts of childhood, and I had very very bad parts of childhood, and. Um, I held a candle with the flame. I was just being dramatic up to the, like this, Anthony. Mm -hmm. And I went, burn, Lord, burn. Mm -hmm. Or burn, Jesus, burn, or whatever. Yeah. And then I brought it back down, and I was like, oh, no, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Lord. Forgive me. Forgive me. I was just being dramatic. And I always wondered, yeah. did the Lord forgive me for that? <laughs> Absolutely. You were forgiven 
at the very time that you accepted Jesus to be your Lord, you're forgiven for everything. Um, one really I, cool I, thing, though, is um, I, I believe that you've had a lot of these experiences uh, because I believe that the Lord's placed a prophetic gift on your life because not everybody gets to see the things you've seen. And it's one of those things where you just kind of have to uh, fan that flame of that gift into. I know. You know, and, and I, 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 I sequester it. I, mm -hmm. you know, because I don't have anybody to talk to about it. I don't have anybody to share because I don't. My mom has the same type of gift, and I can talk mm -hmm. to her a little bit. Yeah. But I don't, as much as I love, love, love my mother, I I feel like I need to talk to somebody who is so with the Lord that, and now look, you've come, you've come to me, Anthony. <laughs> you've come to me, and so now I can share these things. And my heart feels so warm. My chest feels so warm right now. Good. And that's because of you, Anthony. I have, I, I don't know. Trust me, it's not me. <laughs> well, I, I know I can talk to you. I can talk to you about these things, not always live. Yeah, for but sure. But I can talk yeah. to you about these things now. And I know that you will answer my questions. And Absolutely. you're not going to say, you know what, Kelly? I don't feel like talking about it. Or, you know, just, you know, I don't know. Go ask a preacher. I mean, you're a preacher. Yeah. Yeah, I actually am. You know, check out anybody else in the chat too. If you have questions, you feel free to pop them in there. I'm happy to answer them. I am a licensed minister with the Assemblies of God. I'm also a non denominational um, pastor as well. I have um, actually an ordination, non, non denomination. So I, I have like the paperwork to back it. Um, I actually have a separate YouTube channel that I had before I started my reselling channel where you can actually go and you can. Watch me preach at my church. Drop that, that uh, link, like Anthony. It. Okay. Because I'm going to start watching that. Okay. I was actually thinking about starting that channel back up, maybe once a week, uploading a sermon or something like that on there. Absolutely. Um, I'll, yeah. I will be there with you. I'll be your sidekick if you want, yeah, if, yeah, I, cool. if I'm worthy enough. And okay. look, guys, he All loves right. me. I'm I'm pro-choice, and Anthony still loves me, even though we have different views on that. He I, still loves me. I don't judge anybody. It's not my place. That's how I feel, too. Who am I to judge? Mm -hmm. you no, know, because only I know the things that I've done in life that I have to struggle with. Um, you know, and hope that I'm I'm forgiven for. I'm very hard on myself, though. Like, um, things that I've gone through, and I think... I should have handled that differently. I regret things. I regret. Um, I would never judge anybody else for those same decisions, but yet I judge myself for them. Yeah. So, but I think a lot of that is because I don't feel worthy of the Lord. I know the Lord is with me and I know he knows I love him, but I don't feel worthy of him. I don't feel like the choices I've made in my life. I'm not good enough to the Lord and his spirit and his memory. I, I say Jesus Christ in vain. I swear. I I sin. I do these things, and I always feel like if I really, really love the Lord, I wouldn't say Jesus Christ when I get scared. I wouldn't say Jesus effing Christ like I say sometimes. Um, and I grew up in a house of swearing and, and all that kind of stuff. So it's just words to me. I'm not actually cursing him, but. Yeah. And it, it actually another thing that'll give you comfort. It actually says in the, in the Bible that we all fall short of the glory of God. So um, it doesn't matter that you do. Well, I mean, it does matter that you do those things, but you you have a uh, remorseful heart about it. You know what I mean? Like you. Oh yes. Recognize that. A um, lot of guilt. Exactly, and the Lord doesn't want you to have guilt. He He's paid the price for it. So those sins, yesterday, today, and tomorrow, they've all been paid for. You just need to, you know, uh, repentance isn't so much a sorry, but it's just a turning away from it. You know what I mean? You recognize that it's it's wrong to use his name in vain. Just, you know, I, I don't want to say don't, but try not to, you know, mm -hmm. it, it's just being mindful of it, you know. 
Whatever. Oh, see, I was just about to say, oh, my God, Anthony. But that's taking the Lord's name in vain. I um. I, I use the OMG. It's not, It's not. you know, oh my God, that's not, you know what I mean? Uh, and I know some people get, like, really religious about it. Like, I, I tell people all the time, like, I'm a pastor. I've actually started my own church. I've, I've pastored in other churches. I've gone places preaching. I, like, I've been in Africa preaching the gospel. But here's the thing, like. I'm one of the least religious people you ever meet because honestly, I, I, I don't believe that religion is necessary to follow Jesus. I believe it's all about a personal relationship, you know? And, and if you read the Bible, the people that um, were the harshest to Jesus, the people that Jesus cracked down on the most were the religious people, the teachers of the law, because they were all about getting people to live to a standard that they themselves could not live to. Right. You know, and Jesus they was were judgment. About, they were judgmental. Exactly. And they were what I call paper Christians. You know what? There are more people that don't follow Jesus because of Christians than there are yes. people that don't follow him because they've never heard about him. Yes, I, I think my sister who my sister thinks we come from aliens. <laughs> and my hey, my sister has the right to believe that. You know what I'm saying? And People she have makes, the right to believe anything they want. Yeah. She makes a valid point, okay, mm -hmm. about the light in the sky and all of this stuff. She makes a valid point, okay? Mm -hmm. But my sister knows more about the different religions than anyone that I know of. She yeah. reads books and books and books on religion. So for somebody who doesn't, you know, she believes in Jesus. Yeah. She does she knows that there was a Jesus, okay? Mm -hmm. She just doesn't think that that and I don't want to speak for her. My yeah. my opinion is she doesn't believe that everything happened because of certain things. And like she believes that Jesus was a warrior. Yeah. You know, and um so she, it's not that she doesn't believe in them. It's just that she also thinks that a lot of the things that are in the Bible are from other worlds. And, um, you well, know, and then I have a brother who doesn't know if he believes. Yeah. I asked him recently, are you still an atheist? He goes, I don't know, Kel, if I'm an atheist. I just, you know, I have a lot of questions and I don't, you know, he goes, I just, I think he has a, a distaste for, what religion does to people like you were saying Christians have more to do with their not being people being atheists than anything at all. What I, what I would say to people in that regard is, and th this is how it was whenever I came to know Jesus myself, um, because I was questioning, I was raised Catholic and I, honestly at the point where I met Jesus, I didn't know if, if I died, if I just become worm food. And that's yeah. honest to God truth. But what what I say to encourage people in that regard is, uh, and this is what I did myself. I said, Jesus, if you're real, show me. Mm -hmm. Show me that you're real. You know, and if you'll earnestly pray that from your heart, like, God, if you're real, I, I want to know you. He'll reveal himself to you. Because I, he's been trying to do that since before you were even born. You know, the word says he knit you together in your mother's womb. Yeah. And you know, here's the strange thing about praying. Like I try not to pray for, for like things for myself. Okay. But if I can't find my keys, you know, I'm praying to God to find my keys. And then I yeah. find my keys. As <laughs> soon as I pray, I find my keys. I've had things happen where, I mean, I, you know, my keys were like never upstairs. This is in a different house, never upstairs. And I went upstairs to just to sit on my bed in defeat and, and know that I couldn't find my keys crying and just went, Lord, why couldn't you help me find my keys? And then all of a sudden I turned my head and there are my keys sitting on yeah. my pillow. Now I never went upstairs after I came back down. I never went back upstairs. My keys would not have been on my pillow that I was sleeping on, you know, and I would have had to have placed my keys there. I mean, just weird things like that, you know. The cool thing about know all that, Lord. a lot of um, encounters with God, people will um, basically write them off as coincidences. Well, God, here's the really cool thing: the word coincidence does not even exist in the Hebrew 
uh, dictionary. It's not. It's not even a word. It's not real. Really. And Hello, Maggie Doodle. Welcome, honey. We're we're talking to the Lord. I hope that's okay with you, baby. <laughs> and if it's not, that's cool too. You know, we'll, yeah. if you have questions, just go ahead and put them in the chat, and we'll be more than happy to answer them. But the fact that it doesn't exist in Hebrew, which is the original language, yeah, yeah the Quran is the original, right? <laughs> or not the Quran? What's Torah. the original? Torah. Torah, yes. Yeah. That's what. That's what. Um. Um. Actually, the Islam and Christianity both stem out of um, out of Judaism. Yes, absolutely. And you know, you have to think of um, Jewish people. Their religion is the original religion. Mm -hmm. So, if you're Jewish, you're the, you, it's like you're learning the most accurate version of the Bible. That, that there is. I've and I'm, trying, so I'm trying to think of the, the football player, the football player that, um, and I just said his name the other day. Reggie White. Reggie White, thank you, because mm -hmm. I was thinking of Reggie Bush. He learned to read from, I think I was maybe talking about it with you. Yeah. He, he learned was. to he learned to read from that, What what is it called? Not the Quran, but the, the Torah. The Torah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Um, because he wanted to be the closest to God, and he died from sarcoidosis, which is what I have. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's the original religion. So why why aren't we all Jewish? And well, my right. sister, my sister says it's because the Christians got greedy, <laughs> and it was the Church of England that that created Christianity and made up their own rules because Henry the Eighth wanted to divorce his wife or whatever, and so he. You know, I don't know how much of that is true or not. That's just what she told me. You want to know the cool thing? The the term Christian was actually, um, it was a derogatory term that was originally created um, back in the first century. Uh, originally, uh, followers of Jesus, it was just called the way. Uh, the term Christian was a derogatory statement, basically meaning little Christ. Like these people act like little Christs. So where it, was originally a derogatory term meant to basically put you down for being like Jesus. It actually turned out to be one of the greatest terms ever because that's that's really a, a sign of a true Christian is that people can see Jesus in you and and th they can see him through your lifestyle as well. But um, the the Christi Christianity Jesus was actually a fulfillment of all of the Old Testament. Uh, prophecies. Uh, the Jewish people, uh, and, and to this day, they're still waiting for their Messiah to come and to save them. But the they Jewish don't realize, people are? What's that? The Jewish people are? Yeah, they're waiting for, for their coming Messiah to come and save them. They don't well, wouldn't realize... That, wouldn't, that, that be the, wouldn't that be the end of the world again? No, no, no. Not necessarily. Um, they just believe that there is a, a Messiah that is to come. They don't realize that he's already come and it was Jesus. But the, the uh, real cool thing is um, even going into their prophecies about their uh, Messiah, like if you look into um, Isaiah, who wrote so many awesome things about the Messiah, um, a lot of Jewish synagogues won't even preach from Isaiah 53. And this is from their book. It's in the Old Testament, which which is their book, their holy book that they uh, they teach from. Um and I'll just read a couple of verses if that's cool with you. Yeah, go right ahead. Okay. Hang on, hang on, just one second, Anthony. Okay. Um, Debbie, I don't even know what two rings you're talking about. I, the jade ones, I'm sure, but let's talk about this later, okay? So we'll talk about it later. Go ahead, Anthony. Okay. Okay. I'll just start from verse one. Who has believed our message? To whom has the Lord revealed his powerful arm? My servant grew up in the Lord's presence like a tender green shoot, like a root in dry ground. There was nothing beautiful or majestic about his appearance, nothing to attract us to him. He was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows, acquainted with deepest grief. We turned our backs on him and looked the other way. He was despised and we did not care. Yet it was our weaknesses he carried. It was our sorrows that weighed him down. And the thought of his troubles were punishment from God, a punishment for his own sins. But he was pierced for our rebellion, 
crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. All of us are like sheep that have strayed away. We have left God's path to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on him the sins of us all. He was oppressed and treated harshly, yet never said a word. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter. As a sheep is silent before the shears, he did not open his mouth. Unjustly condemned, he was led away. No one cared that he died without descendants, that his life was cut short midstream. But he was struck down for the rebellion of my people. He had no wrong. He had done no wrong. He had never deceived anyone, but he was buried like a criminal in a rich man's grave. That's true. So essentially, like this whole chapter, and I could read the whole thing, but it's literally like the the passion. You know, we were talking about earlier. Right. It, what um? What Two hundred years before Christ was even born. <laughs> what, yeah. how, what Bible do you read from, Anthony? What version? This version I'm reading right here on my phone is the NLT. It's the new it's the New Living Translation. Okay. Um, that's the one I would always teach from whenever I would preach, just because it for me it's the easiest to understand. And it's actually taken from the um the root um you know, it's translated from the root languages. Okay. See, because I've seen a lot of those Bibles because when my husband and I go to Ollie's in Battle Creek, mm -hmm. They have a lot of um, the NLT, and I never mm -hmm. understood what the NLT was. And maybe I'll start following that version. Mm -hmm. It just seemed to be a little bit more laid back and yeah. easy to understand. But I always wondered, was the, is the translation correct? Is the mm -hmm. translation correct? And if you're telling me it's being translated from, from the more correct or the older version then mm -hmm. that almost seems more correct than a lot of people think king james is like the authority on you know the bible uh the problem is it's translated in a defunct language now you know what i mean so it's it's right. i mean reading this thou shout it's like come on now it's like you're talking japanese to me like I can't tell yeah, you. I think I'm going to pick up the, King James as a kid, and I'm like, I don't understand a thing that I'm reading. Well, and, you know, I used to go to Bible study, and it was a completely different version than what I was used to. Yeah. Um, and so that took a little bit of getting used to, and like I said, this was this was about three. Years. Good morning, Beth. Do you want to join in, Beth? I we can get off religion if you want. <laughs> And get back to working, but um, I sent you a link, Beth, if you want to join. But yeah, I think I'm gonna go ahead and yeah, and all the bagats. What yeah. does bagat mean? Right. There, yeah, there's a lot of. I'll get the NLT version, a nice big one with big letters, so I can read it really well and lots of pictures. Um. Oh, you're getting ready to go to the post office. Okay, Bethy. That's what I always suggested to like newer believers and stuff because it's just easy for anybody to read and understand. Yeah. Hey, Beth, if you want to do just like a hangout later, not live or anything, let me know because you and I need to catch up. Hey, Destiny, guess what? 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 I'm guessing what? What happened? Hang on, Anthony. Okay. While we're waiting for her to answer, I think I'm going to get an NLT version. Cool. And then, yeah, do you do you provide Bible study or anything like that, Anthony? Um, right now I don't, but I can. You know what? I think that would be something because I know like the um, at 11 o'clock, usually most days I go over to Casey's porch, mm -hmm. um, Christian porch. I yeah. can't remember what it's called. And he reads from, I don't know what Bible he reads from, mm -hmm. but um. And I go and listen to that. I would be, I'd even be your sidekick for it. Okay. Let's um, and like an asking questions and things like that, because I'm so unknowledgeable of the Bible. I have a few Bible stories that I really like, but yeah, that's something I would be very interested in doing. Yeah. Let's, let's do it. We can start a okay. weekly Bible study or whatever, however you want to do it. I don't care. Yeah. However, however you want to do it, the day, the time, whatever, however you want to do it. 
Um, okay. Anybody here in the chat, send a message to myself or to Anthony if you want to participate in that. Um, we can even do a hangout with multiple, you know, multiple people involved. Yes, that would be awesome. Look, Mama asked for it, and Anthony's doing it. So, so Destiny, I'm glad your truck is up and running, and that it's on the road now. Now you've got something that can pull that boat. Good job. I've got this big, beautiful bass boat that's got live wells and everything in it, and I don't have anything to pull it because my husband hasn't bought a truck yet. I told him he has to wait another six months to buy a truck until we have a loan paid off. Then he'll have $500 a month he can put towards a truck. So, yeah, why don't you and I work on that, Anthony, okay. if you're willing to do it. Absolutely. I would you know, love to do it. Maybe you and your wife and, and you know, myself and then whoever. Um, the schedule's constantly changing, so I'm sure that she'll join us some weeks and then some weeks okay. I won't be able to. Now, should we have like a an an actual study guide and a, a guide to to work from, or no? We're just gonna read. Sure, or. I, I'm, I'm open to whatever. Um, I can do the study guide, or um, you know, we can just kind of fill out to see what people's questions are. Um, well, because we can, I mean, I would be willing to order the the liter literature and mm -hmm. send to people who are interested in doing it. I tend to learn more if it's a text yeah. type of thing. And this is only because um, I like to study. I like yeah. bookwork. Do you know what I'm saying? I do. And so if I can read the Bible and answer the questions, I learn so much more. I, I retain it better yeah. if I'm doing that. Or maybe you want to... We'll study this, and then you want to do a list of ten questions. Whatever you, whatever you want to do. Normally, that would actually be better, and then nobody's having to spend money. Yeah, that that's perfectly fine. Okay, do you do you I mind putting at that, any time do you I mind putting that work into it? What's that? Do you mind putting the work into that? Not at all. No. I, anytime I teach, I normally prepare something beforehand anyway. Um, but typically, I, I will always leave people with at least three applications that they can do to actually put the lesson into their life. You know what I mean? Like three things yeah. that you can actually incorporate uh, to, to actually grow from the lesson rather than just to have learned something, but to actually, you know, grow your faith. Nice. And I can still do the 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 Casey's cause Casey's a minister too. Mm -hmm. Um, I could still, still listen to Casey and support him. And then we do and I can do yeah. our thing. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. So let's take a poll of people that are in the chat. I don't know how many people we have in chat right now of who that's here right now. I know there's a lot of religious people or, or Christian people, believers that aren't in this chat right now, but do, um, who's willing to do this? Put a one in the chat if it's something you would like to participate with, and then put a two in the chat if you would actually like um, to work from a book. Or can can Anthony email questions, you know, so that you can study those questions in the coming week with the with the literature, and then we discuss it when we meet for Bible study. So one, if you want to participate, two, if you want, if you want um, Anthony to email the questions and all of that, three, if you want an actual book in front of you that we're going to follow, because I can order stuff like that too. Anthony can choose it according to the NLT version, because I do, I know they make workbooks. Absolutely. Yeah, for the NLT, they're really good about that. That version has a lot of the study guides. So. I don't see any ones, twos, or threes. So, De depending on how deep you want to go, too, we could always do like the one year Bible together as well. Oh, I don't know what that is. Essentially, it's like a plan that you'd read the entire Bible in one year. I and like that plan. the nice thing is, because rather than spending money, um, I don't know if you've heard of the U version Bible. It's like an app you can get. Everybody yeah, can basically get it for free. 
I have it. Well, I did have it. And then I deleted it because I, I felt guilty. Well, don't feel guilty. It's I not felt too deal. guilty. But see, I don't know, Anthony, because like I feel like I'm going to go to heaven. I feel worthy. like I'm I'm worthy. I'm more worthy than I was when before you and I started talking. And I think it must be that you and I were supposed to do this, Anthony. It must must have been planned Absolutely. that I emailed you or I messaged you to join Derek and I. Mm -hmm. And it was probably my heart, the Lord talking to me and my heart telling me I needed you today. And that you and I, I don't know how we got on to this. Um that we were going to spend this time talking about the Lord for this to happen. Yeah, definitely. Joanna wants to get a book that answers the hard questions, but that was before. So, okay, let's you and I, we, um, we can do both. I mean, I, it doesn't matter to me. Um, why don't we, just, Joanna, we would love to have you involved though, in, in any way possible. Since nobody's answering, um, why don't you just, so are you going to plan everything around the, the you book? The Let's do the Bible, the Bible in a year. Okay. Yeah, let's do that. And the then I'll about that. That is it, it jumps around a little bit. Like, for example, like if we start in Genesis, it'll also include a Psalm and a per, per, proverb every day as well. Okay. So you well, get a little bit of everything. And sometimes you even get a little bit of the new Testament as well as the old. I've never read the Old Testament because I, I wanted to do front to back. Mm -hmm. And so what I was taught whenever I first came to the Lord, the pastor said, here, here's what I want you to do. I want you to start in the New Testament, read that all the way through, then read the Old Testament. Because once you understand Jesus, the Old Testament makes so much more sense. Like once you understand everything that's that's happened in the New Testament, you'll read the Old Testament. You'll be like, oh, OK, that's what that's what they meant whenever this happened. You know so what I mean? Should we start with the the old or the New Testament then? We can absolutely. Well, you're the teacher, my love. Mm -hmm. Yep. So Our I'll get. I will go and get this week an NLT Bible. Okay. And um, that's what we'll be going from. But what's this app again? You said it was the U. Yeah, I used to you have it, but I the Bible in your app store. Um, it, it looks like. It looks like this right here. I don't know if you can see my phone. It's this, uh, oh, let me get it. it. Hang on, hang on. It just looks like a book right there. It says Holy Bible. Okay, is so. It, it might say like when you're looking at it, you version. And the cool thing is you can change all the different versions in there. I do that a lot of time when I'm preparing for sermons. I'll go and I'll read the text in different, you know, different uh, versions just to get a deeper understanding of it. Dude, so I put you verse, I put you verse in here, and it you automatically did. came up and started downloading, and I never even touched it. Oh, nice! So, <laughs> that's awesome. You tell me that's not weird. <laughs> Sounds like another one of those coincidences. <laughs> well, my phone was there, but I never pushed it. Like it, it zapped the energy out of my thumb an inch in the air and downloaded it. That's awesome. I've always had the desire to learn, Anthony. I've always mm -hmm. had the, the but without any support, I never felt yeah. worthy. And, and my husband doesn't even like to talk religion. Now, he'll watch religious movies with me. He's really good about that. He will always watch religious movies with me. Um, but, and he likes to learn about religion. And he's watched mm -hmm. a lot of religious movies. But I think he just, you know, has questions. Yeah. Um, and I'd be happy to talk with him about any of that stuff no. too. Yeah, well, if he doesn't want to, that's cool too. I don't I, ever pressure I, people. I appreciate, Anthony, I appreciate that so much. He mm -hmm. he would not. My husband is antisocial, and then you add religion onto that. Mm -hmm. No, he would be so furious with me. Yeah, that, that's not a problem. Think, you know, after you and I are doing this for a while, and it's a part of my life, and he knows it's important to me. Mm -hmm. I, say to him hey you know if we're talking about it or whatever and i can say you know if you have any questions or anything like that you can give them to me and i'll ask anthony about them mm -hmm. and um you know i i can certainly approach him that way you know i can have anthony answer your questions for you and then take them to him so he's still getting the word do you know what i mean yeah 
Absolutely. Because it's, I want to go to church so bad, but he won't go with me. And I won't go with anybody else because I get so much from the word. And I like to hold somebody's hand when I'm in church. Yeah. And I get inspired. I like to hold somebody's hand. And I like to talk about it afterwards. And if I don't go, can't go with my husband, I can't have that. And I can't have that with my mom for certain reasons. Yeah. Um, and there's nothing wrong with my mom. She's a wonderful person. Sorry about that. Well, that's okay, honey. But I just can't feel that with, I can't have that comfort with my mom. I don't know if that's because I'm constantly worried about her health or if it's just other issues that she and I have, you know, typical mother daughter issues. Mm -hmm. Um, but I can't, it's as sad as it is, and I know she wants me to have that with her. I can't. And so, I mean, that's that's terrible, and it's tragic, and I love my mother very much. She's She is a, a huge part of why I have the strength that I have. Yeah. Um, but now that I have you... I feel so blessed and I, and I really feel like you are ge genuine in what you're saying. And it makes me feel like I am not spiritually alone. Not at all. Uh, Walter asked for uh, us to recommend a religious movie. Um, a couple that I would recommend. Um, I, I just mentioned earlier that I just saw breakthrough uh, the other day. It was awesome. Um, That's how we got into it. Um, that's how we got on this subject. Oh, yeah, probably. Um, and then another good one is it's called Do You Believe? Uh, there's another one called War Room that's really good. Um, what's the other one I'm thinking of? Well, what about The Passion? Well, the Passion's awesome, too. Boy, it's graphic, though. Yeah, I was just kind of um, spouting out a few newer ones that I've seen. God's Not Dead is pretty cool. Um, I see. I haven't seen that one. That's really cool. Is uh, it's called the shack. Um, I don't no, know if you've I, ever seen that one. I've seen previews for it. That one was cool. I've seen that recently. Um, from an atheistic point of view, um, oh, what the heck's the name of that movie? I think it's called the case for Christ. Um, it's all about, uh, Lee Strobel, who was, a he was a writer, yeah. uh, like a reporter type guy. And, uh, he was an atheist and his wife, came to know the Lord and he was trying to disprove Jesus to her. And so he went on this big, um, you know, tangent to try to disprove Christianity, he went through all of these different, like, um, people that were like big in different forms of, you know, just to try to disprove everything about Jesus, like his existence and then different things that happened in the Bible. And as he went through all of these things, everything just pointed to, uh, the existence of God. So he ended up, he's actually a pastor now, Lee Strobel, which is really cool. Uh, but um, yeah, yeah, those are just a couple. Um, there's so many really good movies, though. Um, I, I have a bunch upstairs I'd have to look through and just show there you. There's a movie that Nicolas Cage was in where the day comes when Jesus takes the believers. If you're a believer, Jesus takes. Oh, yeah, you're talking about. Um, uh left behind left behind yeah, yeah. there's actually my husband, a and I, my husband and I went we went to the movies to see that and i knew it was religious but he didn't know it was religious yeah and i kind of tricked him into <laughs> tricked him into going but he kind of tricked me into going to world war z which was zombies yeah there's so, that that movie with Nicolas Cage is actually based off of a series, uh, Left Behind series. It's books, yes. but there's also older movies, um, I think from like the 90s with Kirk Cameron that are pretty good. I have like the whole uh, DVD set of those. Yeah. Landshark Picker, thank you so much, Craig. Craig says, you're never alone, Hip Flippin' Mama. Craig's awesome. He's yeah, one of the really Craig. good dudes out there. Thank you, Craig. I used to think Craig didn't like me. <laughs> but now I know Craig loves me. Swamp Picker, you got a brain tumor before your dad started going to church? In 2003. So you got a brain tumor and then your dad started going to church because wow. he was praying for you. That is awesome. That's, that's when, you had, when you had your brain, did, did your brain tumor um, get removed? Were they able to remove it, Glenn? Or did you have to have chemotherapy and all that? 
Walter, I've never seen the Book of Eli. I've um I've heard it was a good movie. I've never I've never seen it. That's my husband I'm... my husband said it was an excellent movie. He's blind in the end. Mm. I mean, he's been blind the whole movie, but What, Joanna, you're ordering me a copy of what, my love? Faith is for weak people. The top 20 reasons people are confused by the gospel. Well, thank you, Joanna. I appreciate that, honey. You didn't have to do that for me. You want to know something awesome about what you just said there, too, Joanna? Um, I'm going to read this for you. But I, whenever I was a young Christian, like uh, just new in my faith, I got to the point where my life was just falling apart. And um, I just basically told God, like, unless you do something, unless you speak to me now, you know, I'm basically done. Like, I just felt at my weakest. Um, I came across this verse right here, 2 Corinthians 12, 9. And it basically says this, uh, Paul was begging the Lord to take uh, this thorn that he had in his side away from him, this, this tormentor from the devil. And uh, verse 9 says this, each time he said, my grace is all you need, my power works best in your weakness. So Paul said, therefore, he's glad to boast in his weakness so that the power of Christ can work through me. For when I'm weak, then I'm strong. Because mm -hmm. when, when you're weak and you realize that you can't handle the situation that you're in, that allows God to show up and to, to be strong in your life. Uh, because honestly, like, he gets so much glory uh, for doing the impossible, for doing things through regular, ordinary people, just like you and me. People, right. don't, you know, there there's nothing spectacular about, but when something amazing happens, like happened to Glenn, you know, within two weeks, he's back to work. Right. Oh, God can do that. You know, a brain tumor is a, a pretty big deal. And normally it takes a lot of time to get back to work after something like that. Yeah. In 11 days. But yeah, through our weaknesses, he is strong, you know, and that, that was, that was, was the tumor cancerous. Hi, Becky. I don't know if he said it was or not. Um, Glenn, do you was the tumor cancerous or was it non cancerous? I'm just curious. I'm being nosy because I'm mama. Yeah, that was definitely something I struggled with, though, going from being a professional wrestler to being like partially disabled. You know what I mean? Like just not being able to do the stuff I used to do. Right. You know, um, that would be very depressing. But then, you know, just, just seeing that, you know, God can use my weaknesses and do something really fantastic through them. I was, you know, I, I keep that on me to remind me every day. That it, That is a miracle. I, not a miracle. Well, Glenn is a miracle is what I'm talking That's about. Really, a miracle. 100%. That's wonderful. I mean, that's, But he doesn't say if it was cancer or not. It was good talking with you, Walter. I'd love to talk to you again in the future. Stay in touch. Goodbye, baby. Mama loves you, sweetie. It was not cancerous. Okay. But those, you know what? It, Even still, a tumor. Brain a tumor. tumors that aren't cancerous can still kill you because it affects your brain. Wow, that, that's awesome, Joanna. That's That's an amazing testimony there. One pound, 13 ounces. There's so many, um, like with my wife being in nursing, my mom's worked at the hospital longer than I've been alive. You know, I've, I've been privy to so many, you know, things like that. And uh, the majority of babies that are born at that weight just don't make it. Oh, I know. So that that's that's amazing to hear. And they, give, they give them all the same amount of medicine, the same amount of care, the yep. same amount of love. I used to I used to have to go into the NICU when I worked at the hospital and I would see these little tiny, I mean, tiny Barbie dolls, not yep. much, you know, small, shorter than Barbie dolls, not much bigger around literally in their lower stomachs, you know, and they would get the same amount of care, the same amount of love, the same amount of medicine, mm -hmm. everything. Some would live, some would die. And you think, why some and not the other? And that's the million dollar question. Yeah. You know, and it's 
you know, the ones that, that make it, they're just little miracles. Yeah. You know, and. Well, that's awesome, Joanna. She's saying it's 50 to 80% sur survival rate now. That's yeah, it used to be. And yeah, that, you know, that just goes to Western medicine right there, you know. It's, it's just awesome. It's awesome. Yeah, it was about 50%. That's great. Is that, um, was your preemie, um, what's your little girl's name? Oh, I can't think of her name besides beautiful. What's your little girl's name? I can't think her little girl, her little blonde little girl. Is so beautiful. She, now I understand why she spoils her so much. <laughs> it was a neuro vibromatosis i can't hardly see that i can't hardly read that oh vibromatosis <laughs> joseph your six-year-old is the preemie wow what's your little girl's name she's so cute i thought for sure she was gonna get my jewelry that i bought <laughs> jolene yeah how could i forget that name jolene jolene i was thinking that too jolene, jolene. <laughs> anthony can you sing not at all no heck no i'm terrible at singing i can play yeah. bass huh i can play bass can you yeah mama play tenor mama sing tenor no 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 my wife can sing though can she Mm -hmm. well listen you guys um on this note it was a little bit of a working chat for me but uh i'm going to show you something real quick before we go um this gives anthony and i something to work on you guys and we'll get back to you with a day that we're going to start um whether we're going to use text um, that people can order on their own or, you know, something that Anthony puts together and I can print off and send to people or email to people. Yeah, we could probably just do PDFs that way. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. PDFs. Save money on just for everybody. Yes, absolutely. And if people want to follow the same text, they can get a, a new language. Is it new language translation? A uh, new living translation. New living translation. Okay. Yeah, you too, Joanna. Definitely stay in touch, though. Like, I've really enjoyed my interaction with you throughout the uh, uh, the thread here. And, um, Joanna, I know I'd never told you before that I'm pro-choice and, you, and you're pro-life. So is Anthony. But thank you, Joanna, for still loving me and accepting me, even though I am pro-choice. Because there are some people, if you do not believe the way that they believe, they will cast you away. Mm -hmm. And because I love you so much, Joanna, and I thank you for still loving me, even though I believe differently than you do. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hi, Joy. Okay, so hit me up. You guys know my email, hipflippinmama at yahoo.com. Anthony put his email in there. Yeah. Um, I'll be in close contact with Anthony, and we will decide how we're going to do it, what we're going to yeah. do when we're going to start it. Um, we'll give you guys time. If you want to buy a, a new living um, translation Bible, I'm going to go and get one maybe today. I'm going to see if my husband, when he gets home, wants to go to Battle Creek. And um, that's where they, the store that I was talking about has them. And I want to get mine. So... Awesome. You need to take that call. But <laughs> I... I am so full of love and light right now, and I'm so excited, and I just want to go grab my Bible and kiss it and hug it because I feel worthy enough to do so. Absolutely. And sir, that is all because of you. I thank you for that. I thank you for that. Thank you so much for being my friend. Thank, thank you for being on here, and I'm so excited. I'm so excited. And I hope people have said the light in my eyes has gone away recently. And so hopefully, besides the tears, yeah. um, hopefully people will see the light come back in me. And uh, 
I think this was supposed to happen. I agree. I really, really do. Divine appointment. What's that? I said it's a divine appointment. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just loving you so much right now. I love but okay, you. guys, we're gonna we're gonna get off here. And Anthony, you stay on, okay? okay. Sounds good. Um, after the broadcast is over. But you guys, thank you so much for everybody who who stayed with us and and tuned in and and spoke about the Lord with us. That wasn't what this chat was supposed to be about. But thank you everybody who did. And I'm gonna go definitely go back and and read all the comments after I take my contacts out and I can see. Um, and I'm so excited. I am so freaking excited. It's not, I should say flipping. I'm so flipping excited. <laughs> um, yes, I feel the Lord so heavy right now. Amen. <sighs> okay. <laughs> you guys have a wonderful day. Mama loves you. I love you so much. You have no idea how much I love you. And I love you on a dark and terrible day. Can you just imagine how much I love you? When I feel the love of the Lord in my heart. Amen. Whew. Love you guys too. Loving you even more, you guys. Okay. So we will be back in touch with you, okay? Um, and everybody has my email. Hit me up with any questions, whatever. If you don't want to ever hear Mama talk about the Lord again, I want to hear about that too. Because maybe I should do a different channel or... You know, I'll just save all my, my Lord talk for Anthony's channel. <laughs> well, um, you know what? And Swamp Picker, thank you for sharing your story. Yeah. Glenn, so, if you want to be involved, just let us know. Maggie Doodle, thank you for appreciating our talk. Um, yes. And if whoever's not following this angel that is on my show right now, this professional wrestler. <laughs> This this professional entertainer, um, Pittsburgh, go and follow him. P I C K S B U R G H. He does not talk the Lord in every single one of his videos. He does not. The Lord seems to find its way into situations, but he is a reseller just like us, you guys. Absolutely. <laughs> He likes to talk reselling and sales. That's why he was asking me about sales and all that kind of stuff. I just kept this talk on the Lord because I had so many questions I needed answered. And I wanted to know Anthony's version of things. And so, but yes, um, we'll be back in touch with you guys. Okay. Thank you for dropping your link, Anthony. Not a problem. That's my reason. Go, and, go and sub to him, you guys. Go and sub to him. You will not regret it. This dude is funny. He is funny as hell. And Thank there's you. a reason that I attached myself to him, and it's because he gets my sense of humor. Plus, he loves me, and he compliments Ooh. me. And what mom awesome. doesn't like to be complimented, right? <laughs> he's just He's a nice guy, and... He, I attached myself to him because he loved me for who I was and what I was. And Absolutely. even though I act the way I act, he is just so not judgmental. So, all right, guys, go sub to him, and I'll talk to you later. Mwah! Mama loves you. I do. Hey, I love you.